tonight. From State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals taking on Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns. But if you're going to play football in Arizona, a dome and air conditioning, those are two good things to have. And we've got both here at State Farm Stadium, just west of downtown Phoenix. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup, as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Arizona Cardinals. The former Lion, Matt Prater, has it teed up, ready to go, and we are underway now from Glendale. And here's Jakeem Grant from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. The former national champion at Clemson bringing him onto the field, and that's the signal caller, Deshaun Watson. And he's exactly the man you want in control of your offense. Excellent arm, good zip on the ball, not afraid to use his legs when he needs to. And what he's excelled at doing is making plays when the first read isn't available or when the pressure's about to get to him. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. No doubt about it. Really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Here's Watson. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. The sack goes to Chris Barnes. He's certainly one of those quarterbacks that can burn you with his mobility, but that time able to hem him in and get him to the ground. Perfect descriptor right there about how they kept him in the pocket. Excellent job of containment, but they were still able to continue to bring such strong pressure without letting him escape. But how about those guys in the secondary as well? Kept the coverage tight, plastered to the receivers, and left no real options for him to throw it downfield. Crowd getting in it a bit already. Here's an early third and 10. Now Watson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. Well, you want to make sure that on an opening drive that you at least stay out there for a while and get into the flow of the game. A three and out would have been problematic, but that's a good throw there to ensure they get another set of downs. First down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll get it across midfield and down into Cardinal territory. <laughs> it's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Here's second and three. To throw is Watson. 
And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 31-yard line. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now it's Watson. And this one almost intercepted. Not a good throw there. Nearly an opening drive, INT. Offense was moving it a little bit. Had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. They go with Chubb on second down. And he's going to be stopped up just short of the first down at the Cardinals 24. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Faking the give, now Watson. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Deshaun Watson, so multi-dimensional, able to scramble for the first. Ah, oh, Brandon, that's a gamer move right there. Facing third down, steps up, calls his own number, and nearly makes the house call. If I'm the coach, I let him take another one right here, give him a chance to be the first one to hit the end zone after that effort he just gave him. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Chubb. Give him four on the carry there at second and goal. They're mounting a nice drive here. Good chunk of yardage there again. O-line, they've been solid this drive. They have that look about them right now that says, if you do anything but run the ball behind us, you're crazy. They have really moved it well on this drive, and they want to finish it off the same way. From the gun, here's Watson. Now a battle for the football. It's caught. It's a touchdown. David Bell there to make the grab. And the Browns will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. They're the favorite, no question. And when they score like that on the opening drive to set the tone, you're the underdog on the other bench. That's hard, isn't it? Yeah, because you can't bring the home crowd into it because you're counting on that to be a part of your equalizer, ride their momentum. But you have to give them something to cheer for. So now what you're worried about is they're better than we are. We can't get going. Are we about to get blown out? Good news, still a long way to go. Hopkins with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And David Bell closed things out with a touchdown catch. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. 
The Cardinals now getting set to go offensively, and it'll be the dual threat quarterback, Kyler Murray, leading the way. Drafted with the idea that he'd be one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the NFL when he put it all together. We've been seeing that progress throughout his career. This guy's legs, we knew they were phenomenal. Arm, top notch. But now we're seeing his mind come into the game. Reed's defense is better and better each and every week and is showing patience as a passer as well. Not as eager to exit the pocket, finding guys downfield for bigger plays. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 23. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. A short one here caught by McBride. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and... And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. In for the sack, Miles Garrett. Well, you know it's never easy to get Kyler Murray down to the ground and to do it with a sack on their first drive. What a great tone setter defensively. Oh, and no one's celebrating more than the defensive coordinator because that's all he's preached all week long. Keep him hemmed in. Don't let him get into the open field and create big plays with his feet. To get him down in the pocket early, oh, that's got to feel great for them. Well, that last sack puts Murray and the cards in a tough spot. Third and long. They'll look to throw here. That's complete to Michael Wilson. And a good tackle there right around the 30. Stops him short of the first down. It's a pickup of 13, but they're still a bit short, and it'll be fourth down. There's another example of what defensive coaches constantly preach, not allowing any run after the catch. They gave up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. Blake Gillikin on to punt now on fourth down. Jakeem Grant deep for Cleveland. This is taken at about the 14. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. We have to be thrilled with that first drive that got them the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score advantage here on the road. And you know they spent all week in practice, in meetings, talking about taking an early advantage. Being the road team, going up a score, that takes the crowd out of the game and puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. Now a first down throw, Watson. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked off by Chris Barnes. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. Boy, he had to fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle. And Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. Nice read on your part. And sometimes the quarterback isn't fooled between zone and man. Sometimes just fooled by the type of zone that he sees. Because oftentimes, those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. So first and 10 now from the 30. After the turnover, here's Murray. Quick slant to Brown. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. A quick first down pickup. Good start after going three and out on their opening drive. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. 
Running right on the option is Murray. And he is going to lose yardage here. Anthony Walker up behind the line and finishing that playoff. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Murray now. It fights him off. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him nine on the play, and that'll make it third down. And that's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. And that is caught by Brown for a Cardinal touchdown. It's a six-yard touchdown pass. And the Cardinals are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Extra point good by Prater. And we are tied at seven. Just a four-play drive that time. And it's Hollywood, Marquise Brown, who finishes it off with the touchdown. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here comes the Browns offense back onto the field. They had the interception last drive, led to the tying touchdown. So 7-7 seven, seven the score as they begin first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. That is incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Second and 10. A give running right is Chubb. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. And the Cardinals, they trot out their dime package for third down. Out of the gun, Watson into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked up by Kaiser White. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. And partner, I think this is where long-term starters in the NFL separate themselves from the rest of the pack because there's still three full quarters left in this one. More than enough time to move past a pair of early mistakes and find a way to lead your team to a win. 
Mental resiliency, a characteristic every NFL team's looking for in their quarterback. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. They'll have very good starting field position here as they try to break our tie, and they start first and 10. First carry for James Conner to the 27-yard line. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Ball on the 27. Here's a second and eight. Now Murray off play action. And this is caught. It's Brown. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. It'll be an Arizona first down on a gain of 17. Murray a give. This is Connor. A good display of power, but it will only get him just inside the five to the four. Now that's a gain of six on the first down run. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. This second and four. Throwing now is Murray. And he'll take this one in for the Arizona touchdown. Kyler Murray taking it in from four yards out. And the Cardinals have taken the lead. He hit him earlier in this first quarter with his arm. Now he does it with his legs. Right now, he's one of those stat stuffers that you see on the basketball court. You know, the guy with points, rebounds, assists, steals. One with the arm, one with the legs. Let's see if he can continue this pace. And sending out the reminder that, yeah, look, I'm known for having an arm, but I can do it with the legs on occasion when I need to. Now Prater to add the PAT. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. A drive there of just four plays. And the play that polished it off was the touchdown run by Kyler Murray. And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. On oh, the return from his end zone is Grant. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. That pass complete to Moore. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big... And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. 
It'll be a loss of only a couple on the sack, but now it'll bring up third down. And, of course, that's not an easy man to sack. You know how elusive he can be trying to get outside of the pocket. That was a great play on the defensive side. And I wonder what was going through his mind because he didn't seem as committed to using his legs to pick up yardage. He wanted to keep that play alive, so either take off and go or throw it away. But he held on to the football and ended up getting sacked. The card's going nickel. An extra defensive back out there now on third down. Back to throw, Watson. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. And that's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down, and third down defense going to be vital in this game able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. And Bojorquez on to punt as he gets it away. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Cards will take over first and 10. Arizona's offense back out and ready to go. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. He'll start the drive with a give to Connor. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Let's face it, when you have a guy who can pick up those types of runs and keep the chains moving or stay ahead of the chains, you're making everyone else on offense happy because you're opening things up to allow for a whole lot of different play calls. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Pretty good first down play. Keeps them ahead of schedule, as they say. And ostensibly, they could go right back to it because there are multiple options on this play. Hand it inside, quarterback tucks it and keeps it, quarterback throws the ball downfield. You should be able to react to the defense and have an option available on every snap. They run behind center with Connor. And this is going to be a Cardinals first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. Offensive linemen are famous for doing their job no matter who's carrying the ball. But when they have the confidence that the person carrying it can break off big-time runs, that makes them block just a little bit harder. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. And this will be caught by Brown. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you can just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Murray going to throw. Out to the right here to Wilson. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And, boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. On first and 10 is Connor. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. 
Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards, but also like what the runner's given us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Meanwhile, Murray's throw complete to McBride. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. Back in Arizona, second quarter action. It's the Cardinals in possession as they've got it with a first and 10. Here's Murray. A short one here caught by McBride. They'll give him four yards there, and that's going to bring up second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. From the 25, here's second and six. Murray now to throw. A short one here caught by McBride. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. They'll come up now third and three. Here's Murray. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And all the way down inside the five to the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. You have to ask the question, where was the help? Because it's a little surprising to me that he'd find that much room to run this close to the end zone. He doesn't quite get there, but he sets his guys up with a first and goal. Connor. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. Once again, it's Connor, and he will get into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. James Connor. It's a one yard touchdown run, and the Cardinals go up by two touchdowns. You think about James Connor down near the goal line, and you think about the 2021 season with his 15 touchdown runs. He believes he's as good as anybody down close, and he powers his way in here. Prater on to add the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21 to 7. So that one a 13 play drive in total. And it was a touchdown run by James Conner that was the exclamation mark.
And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. On the return from his end zone is Grant. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Cleveland offense making their way out. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10 at their own 24. He'll start things off with a handoff to Chubb. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Now that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You can come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum. Or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top. Or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try and pick it up on third down. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. Throw complete to Bell. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They'll try the draw now with Chubb. And great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35-yard line. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores. But the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. So into Cardinal territory now. It's first and 10 at the 36. Watson. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. And Chubb will try the middle here. And he's going to be stopped up just short of the first down at the Cardinals' 27. 57 yards rushing for him now to this point. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And yeah, down he goes, but the stiff arm utilized effectively there, and it helps him move the sticks. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember, the last drive, they went three and out. And again, it's Chubb. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. And they'll come up second and seven. Oh. 
from the gun. It's a give to Chubb, and he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Now Chubb running right. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Here's Watson. And that falls to the ground incomplete. Well, a nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Well, it's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. The Browns on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and seven. Watson now to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. Here's Dustin Hopkins now to try the field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Hopkins' kick is good. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So the three points there in CD, that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. Following the made field goal for three, Hopkins now to kick it off. And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. The football back in the hands of the Arizona Cardinals. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The drive will start with an option going left. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. From the gun, Murray. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. There he goes, and for good reason. Running with it has paid dividends earlier in this game and earlier on this drive. And until they prove they can stop him, I don't think he's going to be shy about continuing to run for first downs instead of airing it out. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On the draw, Connor. 
And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. Now is second and ten. To throw, it's Murray. Oh, fancy running by Murray. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. No shortage of impressive moments for him thus far. Now he's halfway to the century mark, and we're still in the first half. There's been no answer for his running ability so far by the defense. I can't wait to see what adjustments they'll have to make during the halftime break. So they move from 136 over to the other as they come up on first down. Connor up the middle. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry, and they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. From the 31, here's second and five. <laughs> to throw is Murray. And that's going to be caught downfield by Brown. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. 68 yards receiving now for him in the game. Had a first down on that last catch as well. this himself on the draw. Oh, he shifts past him. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. From the four, this is second down and one. On the handoff, Connor only gets a yard, but it's enough to set him up first and goal. Running the ball served them well all game long, and there's another example as they pick up a first down. Now Murray. That's to McBride, and he has it. Touchdown, Cardinals. The three-yard touchdown pass. And the Cards had six to their lead. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Now Prater to add the PAT. And the lead is up to 18 now. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was capped off by a touchdown reception from Trey McBride.
And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Now Nick Chubb of the Browns get set for their next possession. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not through any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen and put more points on the board behind his efforts. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complimentary football and get that passing game going as well. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10. At about the 32. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. I would think as a play call, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was, because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stuffed that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. Second down, here's Chubb again. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. 81 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that. And that really chips away at your confidence. From the gun on third down, Watson. And Watson has enough for the first down yardage as he slides to the turf. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. Certainly not a positive sign if you're the D coordinator and you see your guys give up that space so early in the game. Third down, that's when the clamps are supposed to come out, but his ability to create things with his legs makes things difficult. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Now a second and six. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit four of seven. They're up against a third and one situation. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Two minutes remaining in this first half for football. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. So first and 10 now from the 30. Back to throw. Watson. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. And the Cards are going to take over at their own 28-yard line. This is our time. Our time. Three first-half interceptions now, and Charles, you'd have to think a fair amount of concern is developing over there on that sideline. And there should be, because essentially he's been a little loose and possibly reckless with the football here in the first half. Now, maybe it's not all on him, but still three interceptions. That puts the entire team in jeopardy. So the play caller from here on out, Got to design some throws for him that he can complete, keep it away from the defense, and try and get him back on track. Four, 
Murray now on first down, throwing quickly to Wilson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Solid way to start the drive, 13 yards, picking up the first. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. First down, Murray over the middle complete. That's more. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Throwing on first down is Murray. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So first and 10 now from the 30. Out of the gun, here's Murray. A quick throw there is incomplete. Defensively, celebration time because they finally <laughs> forced an incompletion. He was perfect throwing the ball to that point. Yeah, but from his viewpoint, they didn't force the incompletion. He just missed. That's how hot he is right now, and that's how he wants to continue to throw the ball. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. A nice pick up there, 10 yards. Partner, even I can figure out who deserves the lion's share of credit for their lead right now because he has been terrific in a dual threat role, really chewing up yardage and getting them points with his legs. Simply put, that defense has had no way of stopping him, and that's why his side is on top. From the red zone, here's the Heisman Trophy winner, Murray. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Looking to throw, Murray. Over the middle here to Brown. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. The Cardinals forced to burn their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Back to throw. Murray. He's got his man. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Rondale Moore as the first half is winding down. And the Cardinals continue to pull away here in this first half. That score that they just gave up there, that's a tough one for their defense to swallow because they've had a tough time through the first two quarters. They really were determined to get a stop there, unable to do so. That makes their comeback hopes that much more difficult. Prater on to add the extra point.
And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And the Cardinals cap it with a touchdown. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a solid first half for the always dangerous Kyler Murray. He was downright amazing with three touchdown passes and another one scored on the ground for good measure. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Cards with the lead, and they will get this football first as the second half gets started. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. So here's the Cardinals' offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. Now the first half definitely went their way, and this would seem to be a great opportunity to kind of put this game a little closer out of reach with a score here. Yeah, and it's a wonderful opportunity for them because if they can add seven more to their lead before the other guys even see the football, that could be the decisive blow in this game. I think that's how they're eyeing it. That's how they're approaching it. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 27. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Well, up big, but still not hesitating to take some shots downfield, CD. I guess they really want to hammer home their dominance in this one. Yeah, that much is apparent, partner. If they keep completing throws like that, they'll keep that gap awfully wide as they've established already. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Murray giving to Connor on the option. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Credit Zadarius Smith able to get through and make that tackle for a loss. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time. Forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Looking to throw. Murray, quick slant, caught by Moore. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half, to about the 39. 
What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. Has a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal game. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Throwing is Murray on third down. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. These are running back numbers that he's accumulating right now. Received double-digit carries and has rewarded them by breaking the century mark and rushing, in addition to what he's done through the air. Definitely MVP caliber football we're witnessing. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Now they'll try and set up the quarterback draw here. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. From the 46, here's the second down and nine. Back to throw. Murray. Screen pass to Connor. So the screen good for only two. Now it's third down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. On the draw, Connor. That he won't quite make it. He needed six. He got about five. Fourth down. Good job, good job. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. They'll run for it with Connor. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. So he needed one. He ended up getting three. And I really like the way he ran that one, too. That's really intelligent running because oftentimes... A running back could get too greedy. Try and hit the home run on a play where you just need a few yards. Well done there, making sure he got the first down and not worrying about trying to get a touchdown. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Shotgun now for Murray. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And the Cardinals are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. And I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. Brown, the lone receiver left. Operating from the gun, Murray. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. And this is a rarity in the NFL, a 100-yard game on the ground for a quarterback. Even as those passers get more athletic and mobile, we only see about five of these a season. It takes a special set of circumstances for it to happen. And, of course, a special player. 
On play action, it's Murray. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground, and now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. Third and goal as they look to pour some more salt in the wound. They faked the handoff, now Murray. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cardinals. Elijah Higgins, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Cardinals take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. This is where, as a tight end, you've got to really sell that this is a run. They're going to fake the give, hope the linebackers bite, and here they do just enough. That split second, that's all it takes for that tight end to leak out into the end zone. Touchdown. Now Prater to add the PAT. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. So that drive spans 13 plays, and it winds up in a touchdown for Arizona. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. On oh, the return from his end zone is Grant. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. A CD, they certainly know the hole that they face as they begin the second half. They have to do what precious few teams have done in NFL history, and that's try to come back from a four-possession deficit. And, partner, you know as that team gathers, they're saying to each other, you never say never, right? Because if you're on an NFL roster, that's how you have to think. You can always come back and win a ball game. And let's face it, we saw a certain Super Bowl, a 25-point lead late, that wasn't enough to put someone away. But that being said, this task is near impossible. Let's face it. And bottom line is, it officially becomes impossible if this possession is an empty one. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. <laughs> They run it again with Chubb. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves them with a third and three. Now Watson. They set up the screen to Chubb. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's good for a Cleveland first down, an 11-yard pickup. Well, the margin on that scoreboard, obviously, for them, it looks daunting. But I don't know, Charles. They're probably not focused on that right now. Maybe just chaining together a positive drive with plays like we just saw, giving themselves something to build on. Yeah, I think you're right about that. And what they have to be careful of is getting glued to that scoreboard, trying to do too much. Because if you do that, you're all but guaranteed to start making mistakes. Just focus on one play at a time and make each one successful. Up the middle, it's Chubb. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 yards there, just like last play. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Is 
So into Cardinal territory now. It's first and 10 at the 46. They go up the middle with Chubb. He's got it to the 43 here. Second and seven. They give the Chubb out of the gun. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. 117 yards rushing now for Chubb and a first down as well. He's done his part sailing past the century mark on the ground with rushing yardage, but his team, a different story. Yeah, they're down big in this ball game, so sometimes you wonder to yourself how much of that is him with a great performance and how much of that is the defense just loosening up because they have a big lead. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. Here's Watson, option left. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane, and he keeps it himself there and worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it. Most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Cooper, the man in motion, left. And now a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Chubb. He takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. Not a big run, not an explosive run, but they've held the ball for plenty of plays on this drive. They're just trying to impose their will on the defense right now. Here's second and seven. And off comes to Chubb. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Now it's Watson. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. David Bell, his second touchdown of the night. And the Browns are able to cut into that deficit. Well, if you've got him in your fantasy league, you like his production, his second touchdown of the game. But right now, his team is trailing. Fortunately, he's playing pretty well and trying to keep him in it. Yeah, they might need a little more from him here. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to call his number. Right now, he needs his defense to step up and give him a chance. On is Hopkins now for the extra point. And that will cut this lead down to 25. A 10-play drive that time. And David Bell closed things out with a touchdown catch. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Let's do this. So out now come the Cardinals. 
still well in control of this ball game despite giving up that touchdown a moment ago. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Wilson's got it complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Murray now. A short one here caught by McBride. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Two yards to go, second down. Off the option, here's Murray running left. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. And if you like defensive football, focus on the defensive end on this play. He does everything exactly right. Reads the play and makes sure he spills it for a small gain. Here comes third in the length of the football. <laughs> They'll try and run for it with Connor. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. Get me. Let's go. Let's go. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and in inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Right back to Connor here on first. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. This defense tough to run against. And those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get him for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. Murray's throw complete there to Moore. And yeah, they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a count or two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Now a draw play. This is Connor. The 20. And he will be taken down, but not before he gets this to the Browns' 15. That's a gain of 31 with right around one minute to go in the quarter. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. So after the big play, look at this, all the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. Operating from the gun, Murray. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Kyler Murray. A 15-yard touchdown run. And the Cardinals will add on to their lead here in the final minute of the third. If you're going to play quarterback in the NFL, you've got to have great vision, and you've got to remain calm when things break down in the pocket. 
Both of those traits were on display there. He surveys the situation, sees the middle of the field open, so he's just going to step up and take it himself. Very well done there. Prater on to add the extra point. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards. And the play that polished it off was the touchdown run by Kyler Murray. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. On oh, the return from his end zone is Grant. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Heading out is the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, C.D., and if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, it's, let's just say it's been unusual. A gain of three, second down. Not a lot of running room there, not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. From the 29, here's second down at seven. Now a play fake, and it's Watson. And he is going to be taken down. And that should be the final play of this third quarter. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Going to need something special here on third and long. After that sack, what does Watson have in his arsenal? They'll look to throw here. Dancing to his left. That is caught. And he'll be brought down with a penalty flag on the field. It was a late decision to throw, and it might have been too late. So the big play nullified a legal forward pass. And maybe we know why they were able to get such a good chunk of yardage on that play. That pass was illegal. The Browns send out their punter now, standing just about on his own goal line. Here comes Dorch on the return. And running with power here. A nice punt, but a good run back as well of 13 yards. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Cardinals offense ready to set up shop. Well, they don't really need the points here, Charles, given what we're looking at on the scoreboard. But they've scored on three consecutive possessions, three consecutive drives. And I'm sure that they would like to keep that streak going here and continuing to pour it on. And things have gotten that way in the NFL, haven't they, partner? Because in the old days, people would, you know, they'd get off the gas a little bit, right? But now people continue to accelerate. But we'll see what they decide to do as they come out for this one. But the way that this game has gone, they've got to be awfully happy with their execution overall. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Here's second and 10. 
Murray going to look to run on the draw. Four yards there on the keeper, but still going to bring up a third down. Here's Connor on the read option. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. On first and 10 is Connor, and they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces, and, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. On second down, Connor looking for space. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. Murray now running left off the option. That he won't quite make it. He needed six, he got about five, fourth down. Oh man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it, and while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. They'll try and run the option. And he's not going to get there. Might have even lost a yard. He only needed a yard, but he couldn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And this Browns defense stands tall. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow, talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule that if someone does it to them, you won't hear a peep of protest out of them. That's just who they are. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and 10 at the 40. To throw is Watson. To the left side and complete for Amari Cooper. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there, it's going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. On first down, Watson. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. 
Well, they've got the huge lead. Now they have another interception on the defensive side. Seems like everything they touch in this one, Charles, turns to gold. And they have to be awfully happy right there to get what appears to be one more for the road and help seal away one of their best efforts of the season. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And after the interception, they are sitting in an even better spot with the ball and a comfortable fourth quarter lead. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. He'll start the drive with a give to Connor. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. I know you're trying to wring every yard out of a run, but I think nine yards there is ideal in this situation. Yeah, now next couple plays, you only need one yard. Keep that clock rolling with a lead here in the four. Yeah, and what you're saying is maybe if it takes you one or two more runs to get the first down, that's extra time, extra plays. Really hurts the team on defense. Second down, Murray sets to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Brown. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Couple of Oklahoma teammates there. Murray to Brown for a Cardinal first. There's a beautiful throw there, and he's been sensational the entire game, moving it around, spreading it, hitting the right guys. And look, under normal situations, partner, I would expect him to come out of the game now. They've got it in hand. But you and I have been around this league a long time, and every time we ask head coaches about it, hey, why don't you take your quarterback out when the game's in hand? They just kind of give us that look like that's what he's paid to do. So it's a very unusual situation. I'd want him out. They tend to leave him in. Well, he's had success running the football in this one, and that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Here's Murray from midfield. A uh, short one here caught by McBride. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught and you don't give up much run after the catch. The Cardinals on third down. They've been really good converting seven of their ten tries. This will be third and six. Murray a give. This is Connor. And he'll be stopped well short. Only two yards there. Fourth and three. This is our time. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater. He just made a great play there. So look at this. Here's the field goal unit coming out. And he is going to need to bomb this one. They spot it on the midfield stripe. So it is a 60-yard attempt here. And that is no good. But that shouldn't matter a great deal as they still lead by a bundle here. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally... I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. His running ability has been an extra dimension of their game plan thus far. For once, though, he doesn't create any magic against a front that's prepared for him to try and take off. From a couple of yards beyond midfield, here's second and eight. 
Back to throw, Watson. This is the tight end to Joku. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. On first down, it's Watson. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. The ball on the 32, it's second and two. Here's Watson. Complete on the quick throw to Moore. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 15-yard line. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They can go ahead and mark it in the win column. But as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them, gets big yardage, and puts points on the board. They have pride, too, on that side of the ball. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. From the red zone now, Watson. And he is going to slide to a halt inside the five-yard line. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. It hasn't been the cleanest game for him, but there was a sign of improvement as he looks towards the next one. Nice bit of scrambling to move the sticks, and even more importantly, he didn't risk adding another interception to his ledger. Out of the gun, Watson. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Elijah Moore from three yards out. And the Browns get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Here's Hopkins now for the extra point. And that will cut this lead down to 25. So the drive there took six plays. And it was finished off by Elijah Moore on the touchdown reception. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he returns this to the 22. The Cardinal offense now making their way back out onto the field. But not that any of the points would be needed, but CD, they've got enough time left here. They could definitely score on this drive, maybe even an ensuing drive as well if they really want to drive home this landslide victory. Yeah, we're certainly about to see just how aggressive they want to be here down the stretch. And what some coaches do is they try and meet it halfway, meaning they want to continue to run their offense, but they'll put in a lot of backups to do it and then tell the opposing coach, hey, I had to get them some work too. I can't just let them sit over on the sidelines all the time. They start the drive with Connor. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. 
Well, they'll take that every time with a lead first down, fourth quarter, getting eight yards. You love that. They will take it, and you have to ask the defensive guys, why did you give it? I mean, you know the situation. You're down, have to stop them, have to get the football back, but eight yards on first down puts them back on their heels. They'll fake it to Connor. Now Murray. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. So no gain on the play. And now it's third and three. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Here's third and three. They run behind center with Connor. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Now, that was a big-time play by the defense. They as well knew where the first down line was, and they didn't let them get anywhere near it. Here comes the Cardinals punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Another opportunity now for the Browns' offense. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. On first and 10, Watson. That's complete to Bell over the middle. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. And with this game well in hand, perhaps we are seeing the coverage lighten up a little bit as they got burned there a bit for a first down. Well, we certainly know the coach isn't happy along the sideline because he certainly wants them to finish this one out the way they started it. He doesn't want to give up any soft completions, no late points. He wants this lead to stay right where it is. Flushed out right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid gain to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Here's Watson. And Watson has enough for the first down yardage as he slides to the turf. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. He's been making himself a weapon as a runner, and the results, they've been welcomed by his offense. My question is about the defense we're watching right now, partner. Even after he got him with a scramble earlier this drive, they still aren't devoting enough attention to him. I would expect that after that carry, they'll do a much better job going forward, spying on him on passing downs. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. From the 50, it's Watson. Slant route complete to Bell. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Watson. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide. And these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop.
Watson on first down. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. I did like his decision-making there to make sure they picked up something instead of forcing a throw. Now they've got more manageable play coming up to try and pick up the first down, and don't rule out the possibility that he just keeps it and runs again. So second and four from the 22. Watson now to throw. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Moore. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. You always worry about those smaller receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Operating from the gun, Watson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Third and goal, try to make that scoreboard at least a little more respectable. They'll go left side on the ground with Chubb. And he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Browns get a bit closer. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three downs, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Now it's Hopkins to add the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to 18. So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Cardinal offense takes back over. Now they are really in the driver's seat here, enjoying this lead late in the fourth quarter. The defense does have all three timeouts, but at this point, doesn't look like it's going to matter much. The drive will start with Connor. That's to about the 28. Second down coming up. 
it'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. And when you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense that's really kind of geared to stop that play, your confidence has to rise. And now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. Second and six. They'll stay on the ground with Connor again. And he'll take this for a short gain on what will prove to be the final play of this ball game. Well, partner, under the lights in primetime, this offense, they gave the nation quite a show, putting up that many points to come away with what will certainly be a memorable win for them. And, Brandon, I think it's as simple as this. Some players, some teams, they're just meant for the big stage. And when they get a chance to play in this type of atmosphere, where all eyes are on them and all the lights are shining brightly, they show up and they show out. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Cardinals as we say so long from Glendale.
tonight from Ford Field in Detroit. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. as we'll see Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions versus Gardner Minshew and the Indianapolis Colts. Coming to you from the venue that hosted the Super Bowl back in February of 06, welcome to Ford Field in downtown Detroit. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup, as it'll be the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Detroit Lions. The punter Jack Fox has us ready to go, and we are underway here at Ford Field. On the return, here's Dallas Flowers. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by Gardner Minshew, six-round selection in 2019 out of Washington State. And how about this young man? Took the NFL world by storm as a six-round rookie, signature mullet, mustache, but 21 touchdowns for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great personality, and everyone gravitates towards this guy. Teammates love to win with a quarterback who leads them like that, and fans love to root for a guy who seems just like them. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he's not going anywhere to start the night. They stop him at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Now Minshew. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool them, right? Tried to trick them, ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. Little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Looking to throw it, Minshew. And oh, that nearly an opening drive INT, but it does fall incomplete. Not the way he wanted to start this ball game as it brings up fourth down. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. Back deep, Khalif Raymond. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Lions will take over. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. They'll be led out by their quarterback, the guy out of California, the former Cal Bear, Jared Goff. And at one point, the ascension of Jared Goff was really, really strong. Back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, took his team to the Super Bowl and came really within one quarter of winning it. But since that time, he's had bouts of inconsistency 
and that's been the struggle for him as he tries to get back to the form he showed earlier in his career. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 24. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Credit the sack to the Oregon Duck to Forrest Buckner. And they get to him right out of the gate. And this defense hoping that that's a harbinger of things to come. Yeah, when you give up a first place sack, makes your quarterback wonder if he's going to go to the sidelines and talk with his offense coordinator and head coach and say, hey, you know that game plan we put together? We might need to change it right now. Now that after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. First carry now for David Montgomery. And he takes us across the 15 to the 17. Give him six on the run. It'll be third down now with still a long way to go to get to the first down marker. To throw is Goff. Going underneath, Gibbs has it. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. It'll be a gain of 12, but it will also lead to fourth down. I think that we all figured when he caught it that short of the marker that the defense almost relaxed and said, we got this covered. And then all of a sudden, space to run after the catch. And now they're screaming, somebody get him down. Fortunately, they got to him and forced the fourth down. On fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit. The deep to return is Josh Downs. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Now Minshew on first and 10. Under pressure and down he goes. Aiden Hutchinson credit him with a sack and it goes as a loss of six impressive individual effort there no one was going to stop him around the edge yeah no doubt about it and that's why if you play in a 4-3 base and you're a defensive end that's why you get the big bucks they count on you to do everything defend the run and of course get to the quarterback Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Minshew sets to throw. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. Here's third and six. Here's Minshew. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. When the hitch route is run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. A 
Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. To the right side, this is Taylor. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. Throwing on second down now, Minshew. This one completes Alec Pierce. So eight yards on the completion there. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. They get six on the pickup there as the drive continues. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. They run once more with Taylor. He's got it to the 43 here. From the 43, here's second and six. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Finds his big tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 32 yard line. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Minshew, first and 10. Flush to his right. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. On second down, it's Taylor. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. That good for 19 and a first down. A much different second drive here, Charles. They go three and out the first time. This time they've been able to sustain something downfield. And that's what often happens. You get the game started. You know, you have to get your footing underneath you. You have to get used to the flow of the game, the speed of the game. And sometimes that first drive is more of a probing drive. It appears they found something here in the second one. Here we go now on first and goal. They'll run here with Taylor. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. Second and goal from inside the five. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. That time the completion goes for four yards and we're set up with a third and goal. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice.
Third and goal now, mere inches from Pater. Taylor is going to take this one in for a Colts touchdown. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one-yard line, and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind-melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And this is good to make it 7 0 Indy. So that one, a 13 play drive in total. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Here comes Khalif Raymond from his end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Here we go. Way 20. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Someone's looking fresh, and this old line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block. If you're an offensive lineman, nice early burst, nice gain, too. From the 34-yard line, here's second and two. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Goff wants to throw on third and one. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. But forget the run on third and one. They shock the D and rip off a pretty big play. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking to throw to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 41. Montgomery. Oh, he put it on the carpet, a fumble. And the Colts pick it up. And he's able to bring it up five yards shy of midfield to the 45-yard line. And a little careless there, Charles, on that carry. And it's not just having two hands on the ball. It's tucking it away. It's using your body to keep people shielded off. It's so many different things into taking care of it and having ball security. In that case, though, we didn't see it happen. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10.
Mike 46. Mike 46. Watch the back. Watch the back. 46 to Mike 46. Let's go. Let's go. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Here's a second and eight. A give for Taylor running right side. A solid stiff arm. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 58 yards rushing for him now as he has gotten the night off to a hot start. Now they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, say, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And this time they were ready for him as he's taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Second and ten. Out of the gun is Minshew. Over the middle, hauled in by Pierce. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 18. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. He'll look to throw. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. This is what defensive coaches ask of their defenders every single ball game. Get a hand on every throw in coverage. They want the deflections. They want the knockaways. Pick it yourself if you can, but at least knock it down and guarantee it's incomplete. Now a second and 10. They'll drop to throw. That one finds Pierce right side. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him point and communicate. Got a man, it's Pittman, and he holds it in for the Colts touchdown. Eight yards on the touchdown pass, and the Colts have taken a 13 to nothing first quarter lead. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something free play, and they got it done there. Extra point by Gay is up and good, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown.
And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Time for another look at this Lions offense. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14-0 already as they come up first and 10. Now gone. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Second and a couple. Play action. It's gone. Oh, that one sailed a bit, but the catch is still made. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much-needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Goff now looking to throw. And that's hauled in by St. Brown over the middle. Second down and four. Go off throwing again. He'll go right back to St. Brown. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 20-yard line. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. The Lions into the red zone for the first time. First and 10 right at the 20. They'll try the middle with Montgomery. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And a couple of yards as they move it from the 21 to the 19. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback, makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Throwing on third, Goff. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set up now with a first and goal. Here we 
First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's Goff. Throw left side, caught by Laporta. And in for the Lions, touchdown! Sam Laporta from six yards away. And the Lions are back within a score. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like, based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. Michael Badgley on for the extra point. And that one makes it 14-7. to So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's capped off by a touchdown for the Lions. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Colts taking the field again, running back Jonathan Taylor at center stage. And it may just be the second quarter, but he's in his own, well on his way to eclipsing that 100-yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's going to be in the books, but it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that the means he's, he's getting plenty of blocking, a lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. And Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10. At their own 27. And motioning left, that's Pittman. Now here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead, a give to Taylor. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. The offense on third down tonight, they've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. Here it's third and three. Now back to throw. That is caught. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. 79 yards rushing here for Taylor. He's got a first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. On the draw is Taylor. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows?
from the 38 now. Here's second down and seven. They'll set up a throw. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. They'll set up to throw. Now he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Cameron Sutton. And the Lions are going to take possession here at their own 33. Well, this was a 14-0 game not too long ago. Things were looking pretty good. Then you give up the touchdown on the last drive. Now the interception. So that's a lesson in trying to stay vigilant, isn't it? You have to stay on top of things. Can't relax too much because, as you noted, things change. Now they've got to go out there and get a spark going again and try and slow down this comeback. Veteran Jared Goff back out with his Lions offense. Last series, the ball never hit the ground. Six to six, touchdown pass. So whatever he did then, do it again, right? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I watched the best quarterbacks throw seven on seven or even routes versus air. They're accurate. The receivers catch it. The ball never touches the ground. Or if you want to take it to basketball, a well-executed fast break, right? Pass, 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 finish at the rim, basket. Yeah, ball never hits the ground there either. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Here goes tonight. By 20. Watch twist, watch twist, watch twist. <laughs> They'll fake the give. Now golf. Now that'll be caught by St. Brown. So just three yards on the completion there, and that'll bring up second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. From the 46, here's a second and seven. Off play action, here's Goff. He'll get this underneath to Montgomery. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Seven yards there and a first down. Going up the gut, Montgomery. Broke through some contact, but unable to reach the 40. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Here's gone. That throw taken in by Jamison Williams. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 28. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. And maybe that touchdown on the previous drive has re-energized this offense a little bit. They've been kind of sluggish until then, but they're showing signs of life here, and they get good yardage that time and a first down. And meanwhile, Goff's throw complete there to St. Brown. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That's a 12-yard gain now on back-to-back -back plays. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, Goff. 
And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Goff. Throw over the middle, he finds Williams. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Here's Goff. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And the Lions are going to be set up with a first and goal as they get the conversion there on third and inches. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Again, golf. And that is caught. Touchdown, Detroit. Jared Goff to Amon Ross St. Brown. And the Lions are an extra point away from evening this one up. I feel like I'm back in school. What was that book, you know? It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. This has been a tale two quarters so far. They trailed 14 to nothing after one. How about the rally we've been watching? Yeah, a couple of touchdowns. P.A.T. here to tie it up. This is a good ball game all of a sudden. Here's Badgley now to try to add the P.A.T. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. On the return, it's Flowers. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And that 14-0 lead to begin the ball game. well, that's gone now. Time to regroup. I think even up two touchdowns, they knew this wasn't going to be a walk in the park, and I think that's why we would see the head coach going up and down the sidelines telling his team, let's stay with it, let's keep going. It's almost like he knew they were going to make their run at them, and they have. As you said, let's see if they can regroup and get going again. Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 23. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. He'll drop this down to Taylor. The result, only four yards there on the play. And it'll be second down. A good way there to have him bounce back from the interception last drive. Something underneath, a little bit of rhythm going. I know the best ones in the league have supreme confidence, but every now and then, you need a little booster, don't you? This is their way of protecting him and bringing him back, and then they'll turn him loose later, I would think. On second down, Minshew. And his throw's going to be incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Now Minshew. And he'll find Pittman. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 
Starting to rack up the yardage here in this first half. Five catches now and a first down. It'll be Minshew again. Finding room at midfield. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. Give him back-to-back -back catches now. That one for 16. And another first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. Looking to throw it, Minshew. Out to the right and complete to Pittman. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. First and 10, Taylor now. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just flowed from his D tackle position in order to make that play. Still nine yards to go on second down from the 27. Minshew sets to throw. Out of his hands quickly to Pittman. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 16. 11 yards for number 11. <laughs> I can't help but chuckle a little bit because at this point, it can't be a surprise to anyone in the building who's going to get the ball. They just keep feeding him over and over, and he just keeps on delivering. They'll run the toss here with Taylor. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. A short gain of just over two yards as the first half clock dips inside of three minutes. He was hoping to get to the edge, but they did a really nice job of forcing him back inside. That's excellent fundamental defensive football. Don't let them outside where they can really shred your defense. Now this is going to be a quarterback draw. Showed off the toughness, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. The keeper gets him seven that time, but it'll lead to a third down. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. They'll try to throw for it with Minshew. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Colts are going to be set up with a first and goal as they get the conversion there on third and inches. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Here's Minshew to the end zone, but it's incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Another shot from the one on second and goal. They'll look to run with Taylor. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Colts have taken the lead. 
And the thing you have to love about Jonathan Taylor, he's a shifty speed guy most of the time when you hand him the football, but he's not coming off the field when you get down near the goal line because he's as tough and gritty as they come. And he finishes things off here by getting into the end zone. Gay is on for the point after. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. That one in the books as a 12-play drive, and it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. Escaping a tackler at the 25. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Amon Ross St. Brown and the rest of the Detroit Lions getting set for another series here. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. <laughs> Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're never way, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of players. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Now a dump off here complete. It'll go as a gain of four, and that's going to bring up third and two. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. And he wants Reynolds way downfield. And unable to connect, incomplete. Uh, give him credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Colts going to take over now late in this first half. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there, that can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Throwing on first down is Minshew. And he's got Pierce. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. 
had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They're going to look to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. They need 12 here. It's third down. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And he gets this to the 48, but no further. Well short of the line to gain. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. To punt on fourth down, here's Rigoberto Sanchez. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. And the Lions going to go back on offense one final time in this first half. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it. And we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. Clock at 20 seconds to go in the half as they come up first and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. 11 yards there and a Lion first down. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw former rushing champ Jonathan Taylor be a big-time factor in that first half. He had a nose for the end zone as he wound up with two touchdowns on the ground in those first two quarters. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. It'll be Lions football to start the second half, and they trail here as we get back underway on EA Sports. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. And he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. He really hasn't been able to get on track running the football, averaging less than four yards a carry. Yeah, I think that they're going to enjoy the film session because all the defenders are filling their proper gaps on just about every play. And you know what they always say for a defensive coach, when I click off this film, I better see 11 jerseys in the picture going after the ball carrier. They'll fake the handoff. Now go off. He wants Reynolds way downfield. 
Yeah, this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick, but instead it's third down. Well, when the running game's not working, sometimes you just got to take a few more chances down the field. That's a good effort, but it winds up incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. A shotgun snap for Goff. That's into the hands of Reynolds. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Now that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together to watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route. He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. And here now the punter Fox as he sends this one away. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. And from that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep. And on the first play, they gave up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about to us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Out of the gun is Minshew. He's got his target. That's complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 35 to the 34. A very solid gain of 27. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Running left, Taylor. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Really good stop there by the end in this 4-3 defense. Yeah, not just pass rushers anymore, are they? Those guys can use their hands, control the point of attack, shed those blockers, and go get those ball carriers. Throwing on second down now, Minshew. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Steps away to his left. And a nice job there defensively. They get him to the ground short of the first, right around the 42. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. That looked great when he first took off because in my mind, there was room to run and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with this fourth down call. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis.
And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The Lions offense set to take over. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. He'll begin by dropping it off to Montgomery. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. To throw on second down is gone. Slant pass. He's got Reynolds. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. On first and ten, golf. Open man right side is St. Brown. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. A gain of eight there on the play. And that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Now a second and two. St. Brown in motion right. Here's Goff now on second down. That's caught inside the 20. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That one goes for 36 yards. That's a well-thrown ball right there. This is where arm strength pays off because he's got to be able to get the ball both downfield and to the sideline. And that's one of the more difficult throws for a quarterback. And he put it right where it needed to be. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Now it's gone. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Once you get into the red zone, space is at a premium for receivers to try and operate and shake themselves free. That one's incomplete. Here's second and 10. Throwing again is Goff. Over the middle and take it in by Laporta. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Now they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. 
Montgomery will get about halfway there as he takes this from the four down to the two. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Looking at this now, you got a couple more cracks here this close. Sneak it. I don't think you even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. From the two now, second and goal. To throw is gone. There's Laporta. He's got it. Touchdown, Lions. A great play there. A beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Lions are an extra point away from drawing level. And Charles, they continue to have trouble stopping him as he's into the end zone yet again. Yeah, that's multiple series now that have ended with him in the end zone. A perfect plan on how to utilize him best when they get in close. Badgley on for the extra point. He's got it, and we're all tied at 21. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And it's capped off by a touchdown for the Lions. A couple of teams locked into a good one here. 21 all the score as the kick's away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Colts football and Michael Pittman helmet back on and ready to go. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. And Minshew and the Colts going to come up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throw left side, taken in by Pittman. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. He'll drop to throw. And going right back to Pittman. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And that last reception puts him over 150 yards now on the game, Charles. And now it's not just execution. It's not just performance. It's a mental aspect that's going on because right now he has got the defense so much on their heels, got them looking at each other. Who's going to cover this guy and what type of coverage can we put out there to try and slow him down? So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They'll try the left side with Taylor. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. 99 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Well, if you like the guys who run the ball, you're enjoying watching this. But the other guys, especially the defense coordinator, trying to figure out an answer on how to slow down the running game, I think maybe starts to call more blitzes because you can call run blitzes in order to try and get more people to the point of attack. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. 
They run once more with Taylor. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and six. They give to Taylor out of the gun. About three yards there to the 27. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Open man is downs. He's got it. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I know I'm an old defender, but I've got to give credit where credit's due. That was smart play calling right there on third and four. They didn't need to do too much. Just let their guy get out there and sit down in the zone. And they hit him for the completion for the first down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. They'll drop to throw. Left side, he finds Pierce. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Two yards left on second down from the nine. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. That leads us to a first and goal. It's a pickup of eight. I know at times today's NFL sure feels like everything's about the guy throwing the football. But when you've got a guy who can run it and move it and gain this type of yardage, you'll take him each and every time. Taylor will score. Touchdown, Indianapolis. He's got the hat trick now of rushing touchdowns. Also has his team the advantage. And I'm looking at it two ways here. If I'm on defense, I don't care what they do now. I commit as many people as it takes to slowing him down running the football. Even if they want to hit me over the top on play action, I just don't let him beat me that way anymore. And if I'm him, I'm in the huddle calling the plays myself. I don't care what play call comes in. I tell my quarterback, guess what? You're handing it to me again. And if I'm the quarterback, I'm saying, okay, that sounds good, right? <laughs> Smart quarterback. Extra point by Gay is up and good, and they will take a seven-point lead. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Khalif Raymond now. Here's Khalif Raymond to return. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Detroit's offense ready to take over. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game. And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. 
Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? Drive starts with a run from Gibbs, and he'll push his way forward to about the 32. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. From the 32-yard line now, here's a second and four. From the gun, here's Goff. It got his man complete. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. 33 yards that time. That's a great job of working the sideline right there. I love how he tracked the football the whole way. Just reached up and pulled it in. Had excellent field presence to understand where he was in order to make that play happen. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. Down to about the 32. And they'll come up second and seven. Out of the gun, Goff. That's complete to Laporta. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 20-yard line. With that catch, he goes over 100 yards receiving on the night. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. From the red zone now, Goff. That's to the tight end, Laporta. And the Lions are going to have a first and goal as the tackle made at the 10-yard line. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. Here goes the line. Mike 20. Hey, keep it up. Keep it up. Bump over the mic. Mike Bump over. Now a first down throw, Goff. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. Samson Abukum, give him the credit for the sack and a loss of 14 yards. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Here's Goff. This is Montgomery with a grab over the middle. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll bring up a third down and goal. Goff now looks to throw. And that one too wide and incomplete. Well, how about the coverage we just saw him break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Here's Michael Badgley ready for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. 
Badgley able to punch this one through. And that'll bring him back within four. So give him three on that drive. You know, normally you'd say we'll take it, but the way points have been flying around, it feels like a little bit of a letdown. Yeah, you just have to wonder, are field goals going to be enough? Because as you pointed out, the way touchdowns have been scored, does kicking a field goal actually put you at a disadvantage the rest of the way? Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. On the return, it's Flowers. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Minshew, first and 10. Now this taken in by Downs. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. It's the Colts. They've got control of the football. They also have the lead as we start the fourth. From the 35, here's second down and one. On the handoff, this is Taylor. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Well, partner, I haven't seen a vote for most popular player on the team. But this guy's got to get a lot of votes. He does not care, does he? Totally unselfish, physical runner, doesn't worry about yardage, just keeps moving the chains, being a team player. Now Minshew on first and 10. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Looking to throw it, Minshew. He'll get this one to Pittman. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 11 yards for number 11. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Now Minshew. He'll find a man over the middle. It's Pittman. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 36. It'll be Minshew again. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. So pass interference, the call there. Always, obviously, Charles, such a subjective call. You agree with the penalty? Well, from where we're standing right now, I think the officials are tightening things up here in the second half. Maybe a defender gets away with that in the first, but this time the flag comes out, and I think it's a good call. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, Stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. Now they'll try and set up the quarterback draw here. 
And he'll get it down this time to the 17. A gain of eight on the keeper and a first down. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Minshew sets to throw. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead, you've got to protect it, and he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Here's Minshew. Flushed out right. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. They'll set up a throw. He's got the tight end, Mo Ali Cox. And they'll bring him down one yard shy after a pickup of four. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Now stopped him in his tracks. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This will get the lead up to seven. And Gay knocks this one through, and that'll make this a seven-point game. From a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Here's Raymond bringing it out. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Another shot now for this Lions offense. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. To Montgomery to begin the drive. And he got blown up on that play back at the 20. DeForest Buckner using that size to force his way in there and make the stop behind the line. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He didn't just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Golf. That is caught. Josh Reynolds. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 75 yards receiving for him now. It's a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as 
I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Now a play fake, and it's golf. Targets and finds Reynolds once more. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Now gone. Got St. Brown running the quick slant here. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. To about the 26 here. This is second and eight. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. 51 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 16 times. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns. But guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. There's Goff. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And the Lions are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and go. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. David Montgomery getting in from a yard out. And the Lions are an extra point away from tying this game here in the fourth. And we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. And we're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Here's Badgley now to try to add the PAT. And no sweat. He puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. So that drive goes eight plays, and it was David Montgomery's touchdown run that polished it all off. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. 
And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now Jonathan Taylor and the Colts offense retake center stage. I guess it kind of goes without saying at this point, but he's had a great game, as we like to say, a nose for the end zone, no doubt. Continues to find it throughout this game, and I'm sure he's got a nice place to live. He might want to make an offer on the end zone for a second home <laughs> because that's what it's been like throughout this contest. He knows how to get there, and boy, he looks happy when he does. He's already bought all the property in the end zone. That's the problem. He's going to sell to himself now. Throwing on first down is Minshew. That complete to Downs. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. Now here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead, a give to Taylor. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Second down and a yard. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. So much about defending the pass is being able to be right there at the moment the ball gets to the receiver, and he was right in his hip pocket, helping force that incompletion. They tried the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive alive. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. to Taylor on first down. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. Here's a second and five. Back to throw. A short throw. This is caught by Cox. Yeah, they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Out of the gun is Minshew. 
A short throw. This is caught by Cox. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. A field goal try would be almost 50 yards from this spot, so what can they do to get closer now on third down? Ah, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. Gay's kick is good, and they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. So the Lions offense ready to go back out onto the field. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at the 34. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Finally, a good play there defensively on the deep ball. The secondary has had its struggles this entire game. Offensively, they've had their way with them. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Here's Gaw. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. He may go. And he will bring it back. An interception return for a Colts TD. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And this taken in at the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. And Detroit getting set to go now. And we'll see if they can band back together after the pick six. It hurt badly, but still within striking distance. A two-score game 
with a good chunk of time on the clock. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 26. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. Throw over the middle, he finds Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. A good start there on this fourth quarter drive. They need more of what we just saw. Down a couple of scores. There's still time, all right? It's not like, you know, they're totally out of it, but they have to score quickly, and they're going to need some big-time plays, chunk plays, explosive plays. They need yardage on each snap. Goff on first down. He's got it complete to Gibbs. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 15 more yards there and quickly another first down. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. A shotgun snap for Goff. He finds his man complete. That's Gibbs. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, so far, little to no resistance by the defense on this drive alone. Three passes, three completions, three first downs. They're taking it to him, and it's paying off. On first down, it's gone. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Back to throw, Goff. He finds his man complete. It's Gibbs. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 21. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. I tell you what, it looks like he's shaking off that pick six just fine. It's not just defensive backs that have to have short memories. Quarterbacks utilize that as well. A much more confident throw right there. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. To throw is Goff. Open man right side is St. Brown. And he gets it inside the ten to the nine. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. They've got it first and goal as they look to punch in a late score. Here we go, first and goal. Goff now to throw. Setting up the screen, this is Gibbs. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. And good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block. That might set your man free, and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively, or it could have gone for more. The Lions need to move. They're hustling to the line now. Now it's gone. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. And they put it in the end zone, which was job one. Now they have to convert. And then it's decision time, isn't it? Yeah, so this is what all teams go through. You look at the clock, you're inside two minutes. Look at your timeouts. Make that onside kick decision. Yeah, how do you feel about your defense, where you are in terms of the scoreboard, and the time left on the clock, as you noted? So many things to go through. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. 
And the lead is down to a field goal now. So that drive in total eight plays. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. Well, they can smell victory, partner. They can see it on the horizon, but certainly we're not done yet here. Defense still has three timeouts, and obviously this is a very slim lead they're holding on to. And let's face it, the easiest way to get this done, challenge your ground game, challenge your offensive line, your tight ends, your receivers, anyone who's going to lay down a block. Don't let there be penetration because they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and maybe bring extra people to the ball. If you can do that, make them burn their timeouts, run out the clock, life will be good. But if you really want to gamble a little bit, a quick play action, quick throw, might be able to get it done. Just make sure it's not incomplete and stop the clock. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. 46, 46, 46 to to Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And showcasing those strong legs on that run, getting through one tackle. Now she winds up getting eight there. So they come up on second down. If they can get another run like we just saw, it would likely put an end to this thing. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And he is going to have a Colts first down. And that should be the one that finishes this game off. The Colts in victory formation now as they take the knee. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. <laughs> Charles, normally when you see a group score this many points, it's a complete blowout. But instead, they needed every single one of those in this close, high-scoring affair. And Brandon, I'm still on the edge of my seat after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to one possession game at the end, that's not something we see very often. And in this case, these offenses, they brought it. The defenses, they're going to need some work going forward.
So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Detroit.
tonight. From FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Sam Howell and the Washington Commanders taking on Justin Herbert and the L.A. Chargers. We are just inside the Beltway, about 10 miles east of the Capitol Dome as we come to you from FedEx Field here in Landover. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup, as it'll be the L.A. Chargers taking on the Washington Commanders. The veteran Joey Sly set to get us started, and we are underway in our nation's capital. From his end zone, here's Darius Davis. And he'll wind up getting a couple extra yards here for his trouble to bring it out of the end zone as he's down at the 27. Here are the Chargers ready to go on offense, led by their first-round pick in 2020. The man out of Oregon, Justin Herbert. It hasn't taken Herbert long to earn this status as one of the league's best and most entertaining passers. He's locked and loaded on every snap. In the second he sees an opening, the ball soaring downfield. You've got to be on your A game at all times against him. The second you slip up, he's liable to burn you. to throw right away. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And that's caught inside the 30. A big play there for L.A. 43 yards. Well, things are looking pretty darn good on this first drive, aren't they? Came right out, set the tone, this time with a big pass play. And if the peek behind the curtain that they gave us or their game plan, I don't think that's going to be the last one we see. I think you're exactly right about that. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Now it's Herbert. Now left, he's got it to Everett. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Well, only three plays in here, but really, Charles, a solid start for this offense. And now we'll see if they can continue their mission to end this drive in six. And I wonder if their play caller right now is reflecting on that last big play that they've had on this drive. Do you come back with something similar or do you have a counter to it to kind of show it and go to something else and create another big play? A nice little screen. They get six on first down. But yet another completion here on this opening drive, and he's now perfect four of four to start. Pretty solid execution here. And how about how everyone's handled their nerves? Because you know what it's like to start a ball game. You're so amped up and ready to go that sometimes the execution isn't there. They've been flawless so far. Well drilled, well prepared, and excited to start this game. From the five, second and four. 
They'll run for the first time with Austin Eckler. And boy, this burgundy and gold defense charged up now. They stop him behind the line again. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. Uh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Third and five. Hey, 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 hey. 57 to Mike. 57 to Mike. Here's Herbert. Toward the pylon, caught. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense, good tackling. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. Oh, they go with a tight end carry. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They only needed a few inches, and they didn't get much more than that. But by about the width of a shoelace, they convert on fourth down. Deep in the red zone, seemed like they had their mind made up that that was four down territory, and now they've got it inside the five. I like the way you looked at that because you're thinking just like a play caller and a head coach who gave the play caller that authority. It was four down territory. They went for it, picked it up. They didn't get the touchdown, but what a great consolation prize. A new set of downs and another shot at the end zone. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Austin Eckler. There to make the grab. And the Chargers put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Well, he wasn't the guy they were initially going for, but after going through the progressions, it worked. When you have plenty of people who can catch the football, you don't always have to go to your primary target, and sometimes that target is actually covered. Nice job coming off of that and getting it to someone who was open. Yeah, the man out of the backfield gets in for the score. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And that makes the score 7-0. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And Austin Eckler capped it off with the touchdown reception. Now, after the Dicker field goal, he's back out, ready to send it away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. So out comes the Washington offense as they get their first shot.
talking sports. It's in the game. I can't believe it. They pulled it out. What a call. What a play. What... Welcome back, everybody, to FedEx Field just outside of our nation's capital. We're in the first quarter of action, and it's Washington who is in control of the football. Howell and the Commanders come up now first and 10 at the 31-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That's complete. Terry McLaurin with it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pickup there, 21 yards. Defense gives up a touchdown on the opening drive. Offense, you've got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. to the air on first and ten short throw there caught by Thomas short completion just four yards and it'll be second down got to give credit where it's due really nice defense on that play the pitch and catch was successful but not any run after it From the 44-yard line, here's a second down and six. And Howe will throw it. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. It's Howe with another throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 34-yard line. And they get 10 yards there and convert on third. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. First down, how to throw. This will be caught. It's Samuel. 
And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, another completion right there. And again, Charles, good time in the pocket. That offensive line on this opening drive been really solid. They've been more than solid. They've really tamped down the pass rush and kept him safe in the pocket, able to look around, find his target, and deliver. He's got to make sure he tells the offensive line in the huddle. Thanks, fellas. Let's keep it going. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Al, he'll look to throw it. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And a top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him. And I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. You have to throw a number of coverages at him, make him think as he's running downfield, and hope you can create a little bit of havoc. And this will be well too low for him to bring in. It's incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. And once more, Hal back to the air. He's got his target. That's complete. And the commanders are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. A very important third down conversion right there because when you're trailing and find yourself this deep in enemy territory, the kicker's not even part of your thought process. You got to make it pay off with six. Nice connection right there to set up first and goal. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Robinson will take this one in. Touchdown, Washington. Well, they move the ball down the field through the air, Charles, and then finally they get the running game involved, and it works to perfection. Touchdown. And, partner, I kept waiting for that running game to come into play and actually saved it until the very end. Touchdown goes on his stat sheet, but you and I both know, and he knows as well, his teammates airing it out made this a successful drive. Joey Sly on for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it was capped off by the touchdown run for Brian Robinson. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score, but... Remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. Here's Eckler to begin the drive. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go. And sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. 
On second down, here's Herbert. It's taken in by Quentin Johnston. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. His first catch, good for 14 there and a first down. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought... Yeah, he might be locked in for this one. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Eckler going to get it again on second down. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Going to be some contact going on. Third down and one. We all nil. We all nil. 57th Mike. Mike Joe. Palmer going in motion right. They'll try to pick up the first with Eckler. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. 18 big yards on that one and a charger first. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. From Commander's territory now, it's first and 10, down at the 33. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. He'll get this over the middle here to Palmer. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. And they get him down at the one. He had the broken tackle, but ultimately could not get into the end zone. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. That's a great run right there on first down. Didn't quite get into the end zone, but now you've set yourself up for at least two, maybe three more shots from close range. Eckler again. But he will not get to the goal line. In fact, he won't get to the line of scrimmage as they push him back to the two. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Eckler will take this into the end zone for a Charger touchdown. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Dicker now to tack on the extra point. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. 
A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's Austin Eckler who finishes things off with a touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Dicker out to kick this one off. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Let's go, baby. Let's go. The commander's going to retake the field for drive number two. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Now Hal. And his throw here is incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Here's second and ten. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And he can muster only a couple here to the 24. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Here now a third down and eight. Mike nine. Mike nine. Al now to throw it. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have a commander's first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What did the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. On first and 10, it's Robinson. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Give all that credit defensively to Khalil Mack. A great stop in the backfield. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. He'll have to deal with a second and 14 now after the loss. Robinson with another carry. Give him four on the carry there, but that only takes him back to where they started. Third and 10. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way too. Here's third and ten. Back to throw. Howell. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion.
So on fourth down, Washington going to call on Tress Way to punt it away. Back deep for L.A. is Darius Davis. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Herbert and the Chargers now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's got a man. That's Keenan Allen. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now it's Herbert. Finds Johnston. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. From the 38 now, here's second and a couple. Here's Herbert. He'll get this out wide to Eckler. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. Through one quarter, 14-7 our score. Charger football to start quarter number two as they've got it with a first and 10. Here's Herbert. Throwing the out route and he's got Eckler. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Not only did we just see back-to-back -back nice gains, but we're also seeing the confidence rise, not just for the guy who caught it, but the guy throwing it as well. And these can these back-to-back -back catches here out of the backfield, that can set something up downfield in a later sequence, right? A lot of the time, it starts to draw the defense closer to the line of scrimmage. So to your point, show this swing pass, show this check down. Maybe later on, you heave one deep when you catch them close to the spot. And Allen's going to have a Chargers first down as he'll get this down inside the 35. And this is just a little touch pass. They send a receiver in motion, just kind of tap it forward to him. Now, it doesn't turn into a huge play, but they do pick up a first down, a nice, consistent game. Running on first down, Eckler. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 56 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Here's a first and 10 at the 14 yard line. Herbert operating from the red zone. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Set. 
from the five now, second and a yard. Back to throw here, Herbert. Flush to his right. When in doubt, do it yourself as he keeps it for three and a first down. Well, here's your first example of how this guy can beat you in more ways than one because they took away his arm, but he was more than happy to dissect them with his legs for that first down pickup. Herbert. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That's a pretty play there. Got in at the last second, helped force the ball free, and kept them out of the end zone. Another shot from the one on second and goal. Play action this time for Justin Herbert. That's to the pylon and incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. The commander's defense looking for a stop here. It's third and goal. 57, Mike, 57. Justin Herbert looking to pass. Now a battle for the football. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Josh Palmer, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Chargers go up by two touchdowns. So, Charles, that's three touchdowns on three drives, and it's just been an offensive barrage so far. Great word, partner, using barrage right there. I'm going to add another word if you don't mind. How about perfection? No surprise that they're leading right now. Absolute dominance throughout this ball game, and no signs of slowing down. Extra point try now from Dicker. It's good, and it is now 21 to 7. That one in the books as a 12 play drive, and it ends with a touchdown pass to Josh Palmer. Now, after the Dicker field goal, he's back out, ready to send it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Washington offense set to take over. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Now first and 10 here for Hal and the Commanders at their own 24. He'll start with a give to Robinson. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Again, it's Robinson. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. 
The offense on third down tonight, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and ten. Throwing here, Howell. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. The safety blitz staged to perfection that time as they sack him for a loss of six. Well, if the goal is to get back into this game, the offense is certainly moving in the wrong direction. This is certainly a case where one team needs big splash plays right now, but unfortunately, it's the other team that's getting them. Tress Way on fourth down is sent out to punt. Returnable here for Davis. So a solid punt, but also a nice return there of 14 yards. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. L.A. set to take over again on offense. Right now, everything they touch turns to gold. This is their fourth possession. Touchdowns on their first three possessions. I mean, this defense, they can't seem to stop them. It's like they're on skates. Great analogy, Brandon, because they are pushing them back and winning everything at the line of scrimmage. And they've just been laying down tracks towards the opposite end zone. So to themselves, all they're saying is, if we don't make a mistake, there's no way they can stop us. On first down, it's Herbert. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. And they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48-yard line. So really the first speed bump that this offense has encountered, they'd had the rule of the roost here in this first half, but now slowed up just a bit by the interception. And there's a chance that that's a wake-up call for them because you don't want to go on autopilot too early. That team on defense is capable of making some plays similar to the one they made right there. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. This is caught inside the 15. And they move this all the way down to the nine. 39 yards there, a big one. Ah, so often when we're watching a football game, we see one with a lot of ebbs and flows, and this one is no different. And sometimes you just need a big play to wake you up a bit. And they get one right there. That shot of caffeine this offense was looking for. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Now Hal throwing the out route incomplete. It's Bates. A gain of seven that time. Second goal. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Powell. And that is caught. Touchdown, Washington. John Bates from three yards out. And the Commanders have got it back to within a score. You got to figure down by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Now Joey Sly for the point after. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. 
So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was polished off by a Washington touchdown. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The offense heading back out as we take a closer look at Austin Eckler. It may just be the second quarter, but he's in his zone well on his way to eclipsing that 100-yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's going to be in the books, but it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that the means he's, he's getting plenty of blocking, a lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. Herbert going to lead up the Chargers here, first and 10 at their own 27. Come on. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. Let's go, let's go. Open man downfield, it's Palmer. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is? to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Herbert setting up to throw on first down. That's again complete to Palmer. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Herbert now. Working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. And he's down into the red zone at the 15 after a gain of 15. First and 10. Well, so far, little to no resistance by the defense on this drive alone. Three passes, three completions, three first downs. They're taking it to him, and it's paying off. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. To the air again, Herbert. That's caught right side by Palmer. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up second down. That's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation. Give me a fresh ball and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. On second down, Eckler, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He didn't just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. Set. 
The offense on third down tonight, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and nine. And that one too wide and incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. Cameron Dicker on now to try the field goal. This a 31-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And the lead works its way up to 10, 24-14. So no problems at all on that one. And, and you know there's virtually no win. This is a kicker's dream here tonight. It absolutely is, isn't it? So to me, with no wind, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. They had to force the field goal. Here's Dicker now as he'll send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision, loses him about four yards. And the Washington offense heading out. They're down now 24-14. Work to do as they come up on a first and 10. Faking the handoff, Howell. Slings this deep from McLaurin. And now this is intercepted, my goodness. Picked off by Michael Davis. And the Chargers are gonna take over here at their own 22-yard line. Well, his arm strength, never an issue, but this one winds up in the wrong hands. Oh, the coverage here is just terrific because when it's done really well, sometimes you can't distinguish whether it's the receiver or the defensive back the ball's intended for. He actually ran with him in perfect motion and able to make a big-time play. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. After the turnover, here's Herbert. Over the middle, complete. That's Palmer. That'll go for a gain of seven. And that's going to bring up second down. They'll run out of the gun with Eckler. And Eckler's going to pick up a Chargers first down as he'll get this up past the 35-yard line. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Play action. It's Herbert. A little short pass. This is Everett. They'll give him four yards there at its second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Second down and six now. Draw play. It's Eckler. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. 
A yard all they need, but it's third down. Once more, here's Eckler. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. 72 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence. And you're right, they need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Out of the gun, Eckler running it. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Now a second and six. They'll try the air now with Herbert. That's complete to the tight end, Everett. There, they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to come back to you. 57th Mike. Go, go. Gets it into the hands of Allen on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Eckler now between the tackles. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. On first down, Justin Herbert. A little short pass. This is Everett. It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Second and six. Operating from the gun, Herbert. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up, not that time. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Back to throw, Herbert. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. Cameron Dicker on now to try the field goal. From the left hash, this from 34. And this one is right through. And that will extend their lead even further. Hey, 
So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense, the firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. So after the touchdown, here's Dicker out to kick this one off. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And the Washington offense going back to work. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He'll dump that off to Gibson complete. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. The result only four yards there on the play. And it'll be second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. No. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's how. Hey, we got a seal. We got a seal. We got a seal. All day, just like that. Just it like got that. his man complete. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Hey, check back, check back, back six, back six. Stop your Another throw for Howell. This is caught, and they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. The commander's going to use the second of their timeouts, so that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Try to power it in with Arma, and he will take it in. Touchdown, Commanders. Alex Arma taking it in from two yards out, and the Commanders get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up, and we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Today is track shoes, because that's what we've <laughs> seen with these offenses. Yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far, and fun to watch. Sly on for the extra point. And the lead will shrink to six. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run.
Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. Taken at the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. The Chargers are going to take over now late in this first half. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Herbert on first down now. He'll drop this one off to Eckler. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now a timeout called for by the offense as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. here, second and a yard from the 34. Looking to throw. Herbert. And that nearly intercepted. But it's incomplete. Now remember, he had a pick earlier, but couldn't reel that one in. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. They tried the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Operating from the gun. Herbert, work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Herbert back to the air. Over the middle, and it's caught. Keenan Allen. And he'll be down at the 46. Well, they go from 146 to the other on a pickup of eight. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Now a second and two. I got you. I got you. 57. Again, he'll drop to throw. He dumps it to Eckler underneath. Oh, he's brought down. And remember here, no timeouts left. They got to get to the line quick. Nifty running there, but it'll come on what should be the final play of half number one. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Coach. Yeah, Eckler, adjustments who was likely going to play first a big role in this third the end quarter. Twice, what's been once a on the tight ground contest and once in the so game, far. As he proved he's anything but a one-dimensional running back. Both these offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Washington offense ready to go to begin the third quarter. 
This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And they'll come up on a second and seven from the 27. They'll run again here with Robinson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. The Chargers trot out their dime package, expecting a throw on third down. And how will throw it. This to McLaurin out on the left side. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. Here's Tressway now as he's on to punt for Washington. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. They decide against going for it on fourth and one, maybe to the dismay of their offense, but hey, a nice consolation prize down inside the five. Mm, nice consolation prize indeed. So maybe the offense is upset, but they showed confidence in their defense by punting it away. First and 10, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. They started on the ground with Eckler, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep, and on the first play, they gave up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down, that's what they talk about to us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. And even 100 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. So a much rosier picture now after that last play. Here's first and 10 at the 19-yard line. Back to throw. Herbert. Out left, he's got it to Everett. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big-time run. 
big time pass. A one two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch though. Up the middle with Eckler. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. And Herbert able to get this one to Eckler out of the backfield. And he goes out right around the 39. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Here's a second and five. A shotgun snap for Herbert. Open man, it's Palmer. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. A play fake, and now Herbert to throw. This is swung out to Eckler, and that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. A handoff, it's Eckler. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough, still a yard to go on third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there. And they pick up the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 131 yards rushing for him now as his big night continues. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Now Herbert gives this one to Kelly. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. On second down, here's Herbert. Let him know, let him know. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. And when you're in a one-score game in the second half, now's not the time to force the football into places where you shouldn't. And that's a smart decision to just get that one out of there.
Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Now it's Herbert. Eluding the pressure, and he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. Justin Herbert, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Chargers drive the entire length of the field, 99 yards for the score. That's a really good decision right there outside of the pocket. You've got to know the right time to shift from passer to runner. He was looking and looking, nothing there. You can almost feel the brainwaves firing as he calculates. I think I can win a race to the pylon. And he turns out to be right. Touchdown. Herbert and the Chargers stay in put. They'll line up and go for two. They'll look to throw. And he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. He hits the big target for the two-point try. Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football. Now, after the Dicker field goal, he's back out, ready to send it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Now the commander's offense set to take over. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. Al, he'll look to throw it. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Thomas. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. First down, Hal to throw. He's got Thomas yet again, complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. On first down, Hal. He completes this one to Terry McLaurin. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. The end result, 21 yards. My goodness, they've come out locked in on this drive. Play calling, execution, they are fully in sync. Three straight passes, three first downs. They're moving the ball downfield almost at will. This defense really struggling to find answers. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 32-yard line. A give left side to Robinson. And yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Second and 10.
shotgun handoff to Gibson. And he is going to lose yardage here. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw, Howell. Forced out to his left. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 14. Able to convert on third and 14, a terrific play call. He certainly isn't looking at the scoreboard out there because to me, all he's concerned about is he analyzing the field and making most of the time left in this game. Deficit's still there, but he's starting to hit them with some big plays. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Mike nine. Mike nine. All right, T, let's go. Al down to throw it. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And the commanders are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just need the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Out of the gun, it's Howell. Looking and finding Thomas in the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Commanders have cut it back within a score. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Slide for the PAT. And that'll cut the lead down now to a touchdown. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was capped off by the Logan Thomas touchdown catch. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And this taken in at the goal line. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Austin Eckler and the Charger offense reclaims center stage. Thus far, he's been quite the dual threat. Touchdown on the ground, another through the air. He's just so versatile, isn't he? He is, and he's exactly what I think we're looking for in the NFL now out of the running back position. Guys who can do everything running it, but also act as receivers. And I don't just mean, you know, the, the, the stopgap guys. I don't mean safety valve. I'm talking about big time parts of it whether they're going to split out whether they're going to swing out of the backfield sometimes they act like a true wide receiver and he's having that type of a game in this one it'll be interesting to see if he can keep it going both phases let's see throwing middle and it's complete it'll go down as a gain of six and that will bring up second down well it's time for them to be good teammates right here and what i mean by that is possess the ball for a little while get at least two first downs Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. This second and four. Watch, watch On the give, this is Eckler. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. 
And that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. Here now, third and a yard. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. 57, Mike, 57. Here's Herbert. And it's hauled in by Nick Vanette. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, Big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You talk about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. And they'll get this just to the 47, one yard gain. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. Here's third and a few inches. Herbert. That is caught. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and 10. Justin Herbert looking to pass. Underneath pass here to Vanette. And he's got this down to the 35. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. He'll get an opportunity with it on the touch pass. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. And a lot of times, these plays, they either go for nothing or they go for big yardage. And here, they got to the outside, turned it upfield, and ended up getting a nice little gain out of it. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second down and three. Allen, the man in motion right. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The tight end in motion right. Here is Eckler. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Deron Payne, the big D tackle there to make the stop. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. They work now on second and nine. Here's Herbert. 
Wide open. It's Allen complete. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Now Eckler. And a nice pick up there. He gets about five down to the four-yard line. It's largely been the air attack that's gotten them down here, but now's where you start to lean on that running game. That's a good pick up there on first and goal. Second and goal from inside the five. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Things made a little more difficult after the false start as they try again on second and goal. Back to throw here, Herbert. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. And that one really pushes him back, a loss of nine. And now it's third and goal after the sack. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. On the ground, it's Eckler. Call it no gain on the play, so no help there. And now fourth and goal. Such a long drive here, three points. That would be a disappointment, but I don't know if you can go for it here, can you? Well, you know, the defense was really giving them a lot all the way downfield, and now... They've stiffened. Forget that bend don't break. Now they don't even want to let them get a yard, do they? So in this spot, you remember what the coaches told us before the ball game? Any drive that ends with a kick is going to be okay with us, whether it's a punt, a field goal, or an extra point. Take the field goal right here. And his kick is indeed good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that's CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. Here's Dicker now as he'll send this one away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Another drive coming up for this Washington offense. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. First and 10 here for Hal and the Commanders at their own 27. Three down, three down. He'll start with a give to Robinson. And yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Now a second and 10. Powell. 
Short throw here to the tight end, Bates. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit four of seven. Here it's third and three. Throwing here, Howell. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. And now the putter, Tress Way, as he sends this one away. Davis now to return it. It'll wind up being a net of 41. Nine-yard return, 50 on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. L.A. readies for its next possession. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Herbert and the Chargers now with a first and 10 at their own 21. 57, Mike, 57. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Throw over the middle into the hands of the tight end, Parham. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Here's second and seven. They'll run here with Eckler. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Get that quarterback at all costs. Herbert now. Across the formation, he's got a man. That's Allen. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. And that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Second down and four. Looking to throw. Herbert. Give him another one right back to Allen. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Herbert with a connection to Allen for a Charger first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. They'll fake the handoff. Now Herbert. He finds his target, Allen. And he's got this down to the 35. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. From Commander's territory now, it's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. 
Going on the ground with Eckler. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter. Looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it out. We've got them now. Meanwhile, Herbert's throw there complete to Allen. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington 16. The Chargers passing game rolling a bit here. They've got another first. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. Pass hauled in by Johnston. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. Back to throw. Herbert, a quick throw there is incomplete. That time trying to find Gerald Everett, and it's third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. From the gun, Herbert on third down. And he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down. But the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming from the left hash. A chip shot here. And his kick here is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So that may be not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist. But time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. So after the touchdown, here's Dicker out to kick this one off. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. The Washington offense back out there. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm OK with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Pal to the air on first and 10. They'll set up the screen for Gibson. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, backdoored them, and that time worked well for a solid gain. Powell out of the shotgun. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. It's Khalil Mack that time shooting in there to get him to the ground. 
I remember throughout my career hearing defensive coaches always say, guys, you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. The offense on third down tonight, they're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and seven. Here's Hal. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he's gonna have a commander's first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores and they've really gotta get some yards in chunks and they know the defense doesn't wanna give those up but they've gotta find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Now throwing on first down here. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Sack back at about the 43-yard line. Credit the sack to Joey Bosa. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. Mike six. Mike six. Now how? Short throw here to the tight end Bates. That'll give him eight that time. Third and seven now. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Here comes third down at seven. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Looking to throw. Howell. And yeah, that will be incomplete. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Asante Samuel Jr. Now he's loose down the left sideline. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a Charger TD. Little choice, Charles, but to go for it right there, and that pick six will be the icing on the cake. Yeah, you don't know how many more possessions you're going to get, so really, you're almost at the point of no option. Have to go for it. Bottom line, though, is defenders know that as well. They know you've got to throw the football. Had the right defense called, able to make a nice play on the ball, and that's all she wrote. Herbert and the Chargers stay in put. They'll line up and go for two. They'll try and throw for it. And unable to connect. They don't get the two-point conversion here. I know they didn't tack on the two points, but I liked their attempt. After the interception return for a touchdown, I was thinking to myself, forget kicking it, go for two, and they did. Well, yeah, and everybody's scrambling. Maybe you catch the defense on their heels. They weren't ready to be out there. Yeah, it's almost like a sudden change, right? There's a turnover, you take it away, they stuck it in the end zone, keep the momentum going. Give credit to the defensive guys for rallying and stopping that two-point attempt. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. 
And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Now we get another look at Washington on offense. And that last pick six may have been the backbreaker as they now face a three-score deficit in the fourth quarter. They need points quickly. Howell and the Commanders come up now first and 10 at their own 24. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. Now the defense, they get to Howell. He'll go down here. Khalil Mack able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Oh, you can just see it in their body language. They're starting to see victory on the horizon now. And if it comes to fruition, they got to give a game ball to the front seven. Defensive line has taken charge and controlled this game. Face a challenge of stopping this opposing offense, and they've done so with ease. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. And how will throw it. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. A gain of eight there on the play. And that'll force upon him a third and 14. Going to need a crafty play call here. 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off by Asante Samuel Jr. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. But with the points that we've seen scored, neither defense has been at their best, but these guys, they've been a little bit better, Charles, and a nice interception there. Yeah, you're right about that, Brandon. Let's face it. It's not always how you start. It's how you finish, right? So maybe you have a rough game all the way along, but if you make a big play like that at the right time, it can make everything turn out just okay. on first down Eckler and the result here a pickup of eight leaves him with two to go on second down good gain there on first down and keeps him in a running situation probably they did everything right on that play didn't they they got the leverage up front good blocking nice hole for him ends up picking up nice yardage stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling they are in charge of this scenario right now they want to stay that way and not in any rush offensively From the 21, here's second and two. It's Eckler again. And they'll get him down right about the 20. It'll be a gain of two on the play, but they'll remain a few inches short here with third down looming. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. Lion, lion, lion. Here we go, D. Hey, it's just, it's just, it's just me and you. It's just me and you. It's just me and you. 57 to Mike. 57 to Mike. Let's go, let's go. 
They'll try to pick up the first with Eckler. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Finally, defensively, they have a little clip to show positive for actually stopping him running the football. It's been a really long night for them, hasn't it? So they got a little bit of a win there, but let's face it, the vision that he's had running the football has carried his feet to the open spaces and to big yardage all night long. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. They'll run for it with Eckler. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion and defensively pure frustration. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Well, partner, under the lights in primetime, this offense, they gave the nation quite a show, putting up that many points to come away with what will certainly be a memorable win for them. And, Brandon, I think it's as simple as this. Some players, some teams, they're just meant for the big stage. And when they get a chance to play in this type of atmosphere where all eyes are on them and all the lights are shining brightly, they show up and they show out. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. From Washington, thanks for watching, and good night, everybody. Tonight, from Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. as we'll see Brock Purdy and the San Francisco 49ers taking on Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. From the host of Super Bowl 50 back in February of 2016, there's a look at the home of the 49ers, Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup, as it'll be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the San Francisco 49ers.
Now the kicker, Brandon McManus, about ready to get us started. And we are underway from Santa Clara. This taken in right around the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. And they will be led out by their signal caller in his second year in the NFL now. And you'd think as a young QB, there'd be some nerves leading an offense out to start a game, but haven't seen any sign of them right now. And speaking with him earlier this week, sensed that the pressure wouldn't get to him. He feels comfortable being the face of this offense and shouldering the expectations on game day, even if he doesn't quite have the years of experience other quarterbacks do. They start on the ground with McCaffrey, and he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. From the 25, here's second and six. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. Oh, able to avoid him. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 15 for the Niners there and a first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Play action. Now Purdy. That's complete. It's Brandon Ayuk. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 41. A handoff left, McCaffrey. Pass the 20, and all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 46 yards rushing for him already. A terrific opening drive on the ground, and it's a first down. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation. We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. Here Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Get ready. Hey, check mic 33, check mic 33. Off the option, here's McCaffrey. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? Hey, check mark 33. Check mark 33. On second down, McCaffrey. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. And that's understanding where the markers are, because it's not just running to them. 
because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. They go play action here, Purdy. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sacked back at the nine-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. A first and goal looked like things were set up nicely, and now all of a sudden on second and goal, Charles, a big challenge ahead of them. And you have to know when you're this close to the goal line, Things are going to happen faster, so you've got to get the ball out quick. Not going to have much time in the pocket before the defenders bring pressure. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. Samuel in motion. He's going to handle it on the touch pass. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. Good job, now, they did get a little gain on this play, but all in all, a nice job defensively against the touch pass. They were able to string it out towards the sideline and never let him get the corner and turn it upfield for a bigger chunk of yardage. From the five-yard line, will this opening drive yield six? This is third and goal. Purdy now to throw. And he hauls it in, in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. Juwan Jennings, a five-yard touchdown. And the 49ers will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. Let's make no bones about it. On paper, they're the better team. They're at home. That's a strong opening drive. And just think how many times we've seen this type of a matchup. Just what you said, better team at home should steamroll them. And we've seen it go the other way. Sometimes, though, they buy into it and understand we are the better team. Let's go out and prove it right now. Moody good with the extra point. And it's now a 7-0 game. So after the made field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They're led by the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence. The word is potential, potential, potential. Think about this guy from the time he was in high school, one of the top prospects going to college, coming out of college, mentioned as a generational-type quarterback. He looks the part. Tall, big arm, surveys the field. It can take off and run when under duress. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. 
They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Now Lawrence to throw. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. That's already the third time they've looked his way on this opening drive. He's caught one of the three. But that doesn't mean they won't continue to go in that direction. It feels like they think they've got something good going there, and they think those numbers are going to increase. Here's second and 10. 57. Here's Lawrence. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. Eric Armstead able to get in there and drop him behind the line. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. Out of the gun now on third down. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. And that's patience to be admired right there because he looks left, looks right, and waits for the right guy to come open, spots him in the middle of the field, and delivers. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Lawrence's throw taken in by Ridley here. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Straight ahead, ETN. Javon Hargrave there on the stop. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. Hey, Counting hey. down toward the midway point in corner one. On second down, here's Lawrence. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. That's a nice design there, but sometimes, though, you get so many blockers out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down and force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger gain. A yard all they need, but it's third down. Lawrence will throw. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. 
It'll be a loss of six yards on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. No surprise they decided to throw on third down. A little bit of a surprise that they completed the pass and lost yardage on the play. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. The kick by McManus is good, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So both teams come away with points on their opening drives. Now they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. 56 yards rushing for him now as he has gotten the night off to a hot start. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards, but also like what the runner's given us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Purdy bootlegging it. Buying time to his left. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Devin Lloyd, the one to get home and earn that sack. Yeah, they tried to move the pocket that time. All of his blockers moving to the left as he bootlegged in that direction as well. But they didn't account for everyone, and he spilled the play. They'll come up facing third and five. Tight end right, tight end right. Purdy. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A gain of 10 and a 49er first down. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat and has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to fool them. Screen passes like that can take a little steam out of what's been a relentless rush so far. On the ready. 33, check back 33. Here we go. Two times, two times. Three down, three down. Three down, three down. Three down, three down. Now on first down, it's Purdy. Open man is Samuel, complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play.
So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 36. Up the gut, McCaffrey busts through the tackle. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. And the ball on the 30, here's second and four. Now Purdy. This is Jennings. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 19. 11 yards there as they connect on the quick slant. Had the offense humming on the first drive. Not much has changed here on drive number two. No, and I think a lot of the times confidence just really kicks in for a team. They may have been confident going into the game, but once you prove it on a drive, it's hard to get out of that mindset, isn't it? And look, let's face it. We could always lock in on the skill position, guys. But those big fellas up front, they're really making this offense go early in the game. That's not the first time they've gone his way on this drive, and they were obviously keyed into him because they were there to help break that pass up. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. He'll keep it himself. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Purdy from the gun. He's got his target. That's complete. And the Niners are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And coming into this ball game, this was an offense that wasn't just talking about the notion of ball control. They were preaching it. They want to win the time of possession battle, and they've done so here. This drive's taken up quite a bit of the first quarter. Now they are set up first and goal. Here's Purdy. And returns it right back to Samuel. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose, and boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. McCaffrey will get into the end zone for a 49er touchdown. Well, we talk a lot about Christian McCaffrey and what he can do in the open field, and it's easy to gloss over how tough he can be to stop near the goal line. And he shows you just how tough he is on that carry as he takes it into the end zone. Extra point try now for Moody. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. 
This fielded right at the goal line. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. On first down, Lawrence. That's to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense, and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Looking to throw, Lawrence finds his tight end, Ingram. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. On first and 10, it's ETN. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. From the 43, here's second and a couple. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. Yeah, good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. After one, a 14-3 ball game. The Jags with a football to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and 10. Motion man left is Kirk. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. And now they'll throw it with Lawrence. And a catch made by his tight end, Luke Farrell. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And now third down and six to go. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. The Jaguars on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and six. Lawrence. That is caught. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 17-yard line. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first halves, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. On 
But they had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and 10. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because hey, the offensive hey, line is winning hey. at the point of attack. Second and five. 57 to Mike. 57 to Mike. Hey, come on. Now Lawrence. He'll drop that underneath to ETN. And the Jags are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, try to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. ETN. He is not going to advance very far. He'll be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, but it sets up second and goal. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. Hey, pick it up, defense. Let's go. Here we go. On second down, Lawrence. Got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Evan Ingram from four yards out. And the Jaguars are back within a score. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. And he's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And Evan Ingram able to finish it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. Christian McCaffrey and his 49er teammates back onto the field. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 22. The drive will start with an option going left. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. We got four. We got four. Purdy looking to throw. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And Kittle going to have a 49ers first down as the tackle made up near the 35. It's a nine-yard gain, and it'll keep the drive moving. 
And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And they'll go on the ground. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And the Jags grab it. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. Obviously, you got to hold on to the football, but I've got to give credit to the defense there. Good job of knocking it free. Yeah, because a lot of the time we just blame the offensive players for not taking care of it. How about the effort of the defensive players knowing that guys are going to, and if they're good, anticipate the contact coming and try and cover up the football, and they still find ways to knock it free. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now they show jet sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Hey, After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. I got you. I got you. 57's the mic. Watch 57. Now Lawrence. Complete to Jones. Short completion, just four yards, third and seven now. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. In danger of squandering their great field position as they come up on a third and seven. Here's Lawrence to throw. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. And this is off the left upright. And it comes back. It's no good. And that will keep this a four-point game. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. And last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. That's caught by Werner, the tight end. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. So the completion results there in nine yards. 
And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. The coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? They run with McCaffrey off the option. And he gets it down to the 32. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Second and one, and people wanted to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. Second down and eight. Go, go, go. Man left, man left. Hey, four down, four down. Right. McCaffrey running up the middle. And he is close to a first down as he's tackled at the Jaguars 23. The 71 yards rushing for him now to this point. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And they'll run the option on third and short yardage. Now he's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Boy, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think it's big boys up front, that offensive line. They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. Kyle Shanahan's made the decision. They're going on fourth down. Here we go with McCaffrey. And some determined running there as he'll pick his way down to the 12-yard line. A big pickup of 12 yards on fourth down to keep this drive from stalling. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. This time they'll throw it. Here's Purdy. The tight end Kittle has it on the left side. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. Second and nine. Off the option, here's McCaffrey. And he's brought down. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. First and goal, they'll try the option left. And he'll take this into the end zone for a San Francisco touchdown. It's a one-yard touchdown run, and they are able to add on to their advantage. And maybe the defense caught a little by surprise there that he took off and got in? Yeah, I would think so, because if you're analyzing it from that side of the ball, you're thinking running back, fullback. <laughs> takes you a while before you get to the quarterback. Now Moody for the PAT.
It's good, and it's 21-10. A 10-play drive that time, and it's polished off by a touchdown for San Francisco. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Stop. Stop. Yeah, baby. The Jaguars offense now heads back onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. He's going to air one out. It's caught inside the 25. Touchdown, Jaguars! Travis Etienne, 78 yards. And the Jags are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. And that is how you retaliate after getting scored on one play, big pass downfield, and you hit the end zone. Almost feels like two boxers just throwing haymakers at each other, doesn't it? One connects with a big one, the other comes right back. Okay, I'll show you. And they attacked right back on the first play of the drive and hit them big. McManus now for the extra point. And he's got it to make this a 21-17 game. Well, the offense wasn't out there for a long time, but they were out there for a good time. One play, and they're able to hit pay dirt. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The 49ers offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And right now, we've got a little bit of an offensive masterpiece going on both sides, moving the football, scoring points. It's almost like somebody put the defense on rookie mode in this one. I mean, we haven't even left the first half, Charles, and we're certainly on pace for a shootout. An excellent start for both offenses. The fans have to be enjoying this to seeing all these points go up on the board. As a former defender, you know I'm not enjoying this at all, but right now, both these teams just trading haymakers. Let's see if anyone slips up first. Can anyone counter with a nice little jab and get things going in their direction? And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Let's go now. From the 32-yard line now, here's go, second and six. Mike Schick, 33. 33. They run with McCaffrey off the option. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. Here we go, 
The offense on third down tonight, they've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This will be third and five. Got a man right side, it's McCaffrey. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. That's good for nine yards as they convert on the third down play. But well, they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. They run the option here on first and 10. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free, and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Throwing on second down, it's Purdy. He'll get this to Jennings over the middle. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 36. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 36. Back to throw, Purdy. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think? A guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. That everyone thought they were doing something, and they were supposed to be doing something else. But bottom line is, no matter what, you have to know where he is and cover him on every play call it a gain of six on the play and that'll bring up second down. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. From the 17, here's second and four. A give running left, it's McCaffrey. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Second quarter action with 159 remaining. No chance, no chance. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. The throwing here, Purdy. Throw left side, McCaffrey's got it. And the 49ers are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Shotgun now with Purdy. That'll be caught by Ayuk. Touchdown, 49ers. A nine-yard touchdown there. And the Niners are able to add on to that lead. That's why you've got your star out there. Throw the ball to him. They did. That's simply saying we don't care what coverage you put out there. He's so good, we're going there with the football anyway, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Inside the red zone, they go to him, he gets it done. The extra point try now for Moody. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. 
So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was Brandon Ayuk capping it off with a touchdown reception. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. Jamal Agnew now to return it. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. On first and ten, it's Lawrence. Over the middle, that's caught by Ridley. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? They go play action now, Lawrence. And this one is incomplete. It went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Right, let's go. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Now Lawrence to throw. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant and it's intercepted. Picked off by Fred Warner. And into the end zone, a pick six for the 49er D as they score the touchdown. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Now Moody for the PAT. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. To return, here's Agnew. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Jags going to go on offense now late in this first half. I don't think they need to be reminded of the situation here. I mean, the clock is dwindling. Three-score deficit waiting for them at halftime unless they can get something on the board here before intermission. will try again after the pick six. Caught on the right side by Jones. The Jaguar is going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Hey, hey. 
Yeah, first and ten here. And you know, if they could just get three out of this, there's something about narrowing it to a two-score game at half that makes it feel like much less of an obstacle. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw here taken in by Ingram. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Now a second and two. Here's Lawrence to the sideline and incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Lawrence going to throw again. And that is incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. So on fourth down, here's Logan Cook to punt for Jacksonville. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Out comes Christian McCaffrey with the rest of the offense. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep Look, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. Here's Purdy on first and 10. Got a man, that's Ayuk. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. So eight yards on the completion there, and it'll be second and a couple. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night as we'll send you eastward to Orlando. Standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports halftime report. We saw a fine performance in the first half from the former Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy. He threw two touchdown passes, ran for another, as his guys have the lead at halftime. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball into the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. 
They'll look to ETN to start things out. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. The Lawrence will throw. Short pass tip, but caught anyway. Only able to gain a couple there. And this will wind up being a third and three. Well, sure looked pretty coming off of his hand, but sometimes you might have to take a little bit off of it. That one looked a little too hot to handle. Yeah, but off the tip, hey, they still got the catch, right? It's amazing, isn't it? Even when it goes wrong, it, it turns out right. right. <laughs> This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. On play action, Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. It was third and short, and they go flying past the marker for a gain of nearly 30 yards. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do where they are in this game they've got to push the ball downfield take their shots try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time that was a nice play there so from inside niner territory now this is first and ten at the 39-yard line. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. A throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Second and 10. Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. Quick slant caught by Kirk. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Draw play, ETN. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. This second and four. Back to throw. Lawrence, and yeah, that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. Looking to throw. Lawrence, screen play. Here's ETN. And so close, he gets it to the one. Out of bounds right there. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've certainly had their share of troubles running the football in this one, but this play is almost an extension of the running game right here. They set up the screen, let him work out in space on the perimeter, and he turns it into a big pickup. Back to throw, Lawrence. toward the pylon, but it's incomplete. I have a few questions about that throw because to me, there just wasn't a lot there. I thought he tried to do a little bit too much, almost tried to will a receiver open when there was no chance he was going to be. Nice job by the linebacker being all over that one and knocking it away. 
Another shot from the one on second and goal. From the shotgun, Lawrence, and that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Evan Ingram, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Jaguars are able to cut into this lead as they score on the opening drive of the second half. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Extra point from McManus is good. And that'll make this now an 11-point deficit. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead, and it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You can say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime, then sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're saying, let's get on with this. we got to go out there and get some more points. Purdy to throw it on first down. That ball caught, Brandon Ayuk. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Purdy. Connects with Kittle underneath. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. I like the thought process. I like the design. But I think he may have waited a little too long to spot his man because if you're going to run that drag route, you've got to put it on him and let him turn up field. Instead, he waits until his receiver is too close to the sideline and they don't get the yards after the catch. Out of the pistol, McCaffrey. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. Here now, third and a yard. And they'll run it here. He needed a yard. That's exactly what he got. Earns him a new set of downs. It's no accident. They've been moving the ball well all game long. This offensive line has done an excellent job adapting to everything the defense is throwing at them and creating holes for their runners. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Trayvon Walker makes the tackle. 
Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Now second and nine. Purdy will set up to throw it here. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 22-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. And they'll go on the ground. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Let's go. Viking 18. So we got man, man, man. Hey, check. This is Samuel. Check, 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 check. And some determined running there as he'll pick his way down to the 12-yard line. The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. Well, partner, this drive has been a model of efficiency. They've done everything they've wanted to. And the defensive guys, they've got to be getting frustrated. They can't figure out how to get off the field. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. From the three, second and a yard. Off the option, here's McCaffrey. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. That'll be caught by Ayuk. Touchdown, 49ers. Brandon Ayuk with his second touchdown of the night as his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. An extra point try now for Moody. And the lead is up to 18 now. So that one, a long 11-play drive. And it was Brandon Ayuk capping it off with a touchdown reception. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. They did what they had to do to start this third quarter, went down, got the touchdown to cut the lead, but the matching touchdown a moment ago, and we're right back where we started at halftime. Yeah, you're exactly right, partner. They had a little bounce in their step after scoring that first touchdown, but the defense gave one up, and that's the problem right now. Can they get better play from their defense while they continue to score on offense? Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 26. 
They'll start on the ground, ETN. And not a whole lot there, maybe a yard to the 27. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Still nine yards to go on second down from the 27. And they'll go again with ETN. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and 10. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Looking to throw Lawrence. He'll get that underneath ETN. And he's going to get this to the 31, but that is still well short of what he needed. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Great coverage there holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Brock Purdy in the offense back out there. He really continues to pick apart this defense. Last drive, perfect, and it culminated in his third touchdown pass. As long as we've been doing this, how many times has a player in this type of a zone described the game as really slowed down? Yep. So right now, instead of warp speed, it's snail's just, pace. Oh, snail's pace for him, and he can do whatever he wants. Feels like he has all the time in the world to throw the ball, and his offensive line has been giving him that. Wiggles free. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That was a good forceful run, and it demonstrates why you've got to put your body on a runner when you're trying to tackle him. If you just go in there and just try and get him down with arm tackles, usually doesn't work very well, and we saw in that play, he'll run right through those attempted plays. Hey, check mark 33, check mark 33. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he stopped immediately there. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Running the ball served them well all game long, and there's another example as they pick up a first down. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll give it up to McCaffrey. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. 33, 33. Another run with McCaffrey on second down. 
131 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game, and I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. Birdie on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a 49ers first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. So how would you describe that one, partner? Workmanlike right there, getting that first down, blue-collar type football? Yeah, only needed three, got four, just enough. I like workmanlike. I think it's pretty cool myself. Everything doesn't have to be high glamour in this game. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. Now Purdy. He's got Ayuk once again. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Second down and a yard. And he's going to use his legs here. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. Pretty good job there defensively of stringing that one out. Yeah, you've got a quarterback who's waiting and waiting for something to develop, and it just never materialized, and down he went behind the line of scrimmage. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Mike Sick, 33, 33. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Well, this has been a long drive. In fact, it's eaten up a good chunk of the third quarter, which is precisely what you want when you're playing with the lead. You control the football, you control the clock, and impose your will on the defense. First down, it's Purdy. Oh, a first mistake for him in the ball game as it's intercepted. And the Jaguars force the turnover. They'll take over at their own 27. Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores. But, yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And, look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception, they've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 27. Now ETN to start the drive. First by him near the 35. And this will be a Jaguars first down as the tackle made just shy of the 40. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. ETN once more. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. 
Third quarter on a Monday night with a second and 10 coming up. Now Lawrence. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. On third down, Lawrence. And that's complete ETN out of the backfield. And he's going to come up a few yards short. Brought down at the 45. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Here we go. Got to have it. Lawrence able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. So no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Escaping the pressure right. And Lawrence going to smartly hit the deck here as he is able to pick up the first down in the process. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. I like how he hung in there and went through his progressions, but eventually his internal clock went off and told him it was time to make a run for it, and he ends up sliding down with a solid gain. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 right at the 40. Now Lawrence. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one, closed quickly, and helped force the incompletion. Hey, lie, lie. Now a second and 10. Lawrence, a short throw to Ingram. Sharp there with his feet, gets him a little extra space, and then drop just inside the 20. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that in-line point-of-attack blocker that we used to have. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Fred Warner. And the Niners are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. But here in the fourth quarter, defensively, you know that you're just going to blanket the field with defensive backs and say, OK, take your best shot. And that time, it's intercepted. And we've often seen teams go into the prevent early, way too early. And sometimes they get too soft in their coverages. But not in this case. They understood the situation and played it with the proper aggression. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at the 34. 
And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. From just shy of midfield, here's a second and nine. And they'll run it here. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. That's what I'm talking about. Nice hit, boy. Here's third and three. John Deep, John Deep. Watch tight, watch tight. Time to go. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. Here's Purdy. And trying to get it to Samuel, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Andre Sisco. Down to the 10. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, partner, this defense now with multiple interceptions in this game, but this time they say turnabout is fair play because, remember, they had a pick six on the other side, and now they get a pick six of their own. Yeah, they actually added to some of their nice play throughout this ball game. A good effort by them to secure another interception on this one. A better effort to take it all the way back for six. And how about an exceptional effort to match their opposition's pick six from earlier in this game? Now McManus to tack on the extra point. And that one makes this an 11-point deficit now. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Oh, 
And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field. And the pick six we just saw makes things a little more interesting. Still, though, a two-possession game as they control their destiny in this fourth quarter. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. But when you're up by two scores in the fourth quarter and you're going to throw the football, expect to see a lot of man coverage because usually what comes along with man coverage is pressure. So if you're a play caller and you want to keep throwing the football, that's fine. Just make sure your offensive line understands they're going to get additional guys running at the quarterback. Now here's a little touch pass as they tap it quickly to their receiver. That's a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on him before he could get much out of it. Now we're at the 41, second and nine. They run with McCaffrey off the option. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. This is about what you'd expect. Defense selling out to stop the run. Pretty good on first and second down. Yeah, you're no longer really worried about making sure you're holding up the offensive lineman as a defensive lineman. Now you're just talking about getting in gaps. You're trying to get upfield, penetrate, and make a play on the football, especially, you know, before the running back really gets control of it. That's what you're doing. You're also bringing the linebackers in to jam the line of script. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. And he's able to get it back to the 41 yard line. Well, they're not making it easy on themselves here down the stretch. Two picks now in the fourth quarter trying to hang on to that lead. Talk about keeping someone in the game. Instead of being able to shut the door, it's still cracked open because they can come back on you now. The only people who are really happy about those picks, any fantasy team that has this defense. shake off the interception he'll look to throw and he is going to lose yardage here that one unable to develop never got going a loss of a couple at its second down you know the key to a good screen pass is don't you but you're going to tell me good blocking well good blocking eventually but first is good acting you want to let the defenders go past you leak out to whichever side or even in the middle where you want to set up the screen and then you do your blocking how about the read though by the defensive guys they weren't fooled at all and actually ran with the lineman to where the play was and smothered it for a loss of yardage here's lawrence to throw and completes it to kirk over the middle and he gets it down to the 32. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. 54 On third and one, it's Lawrence. And this pass broken up. Uh, the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. The kick by McManus is good, and that'll make this an eight-point game.
All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago. So they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Tackle made by Foley Fadukasi, the former UConn Husky. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. From the 24 now, here's second and nine. They'll let the QB keep it here off the option. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. Here's third and ten. Purdy looking to throw. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. There's a reason the number four was flashing through my mind when he let that one go. Three touchdowns already in his back pocket. The deep ball's been a great weapon for him in this one. Unfortunately, empty on that attempt. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Shifts by him at the 25. Good open field tackling there. A 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive dead with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. Now, got to go thank the guys on D. Hey, hey, hey. So good, so good. Just like that. Hey, check Mike 57. Mike. Red, red. On first down, Lawrence. This one caught by Ridley. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. And that's a much needed first down right there. Look, they're down by eight. 
So logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out of this drive. But the way things are going, I don't know if I'd put it in the hands of my defense here. You might not get the ball back at all. So if a fourth down situation comes up, I'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now. From their own 40 to the other 40, the gain of 20 leads to first and 10. From the gun, it's Lawrence. And it's complete right back to Ridley. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another catch for him there. This one good for 11, first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Again, it's Lawrence. Now a leaping catch. He's got it. And they're going to be set up now with a ball at the 13-yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. 54 Mike, 54 Mike. Check over. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And the comeback may stall out. It's intercepted. Picked off by Tashawn Gibson. And the 49ers will take over here at their own 14-yard line. Agreed, that's twice now in this fourth quarter. As a quarterback, a lot of times you think it's all on you to make plays when you're losing. And here, the play's not there, but he throws it anyway. And San Francisco gets set to go here. They get the crucial turnover just huge, but now they've got the football deep in their own territory, and you got to be careful because if you give it right back, there goes your lead. Have to be extremely happy with their defense. They received a gift. That takeaway, even though they're deep in their own territory, now they have the football. And you know there's always that alpha on defense, that grouchy guy. Forget what the coaches said. I'll guarantee you, he told the quarterback, we just took care of you, now you take care of us. They'll start by running the option to the right. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. All around great play by Devin Lloyd using his athleticism to get to the backfield and his strength to stop him for a loss. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Third down. Here's McCaffrey. And he's going to be stopped well short of what he needed as the tackle is made at the 18-yard line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Here comes the 49ers punter now, standing right on his own five-yard line. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And they will take over first and 10. So here now, Lawrence and the Jaguars, down by eight, a little under a minute 50 remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Hey, 
Lion, Lion. Hey, son, hey, son, son. 57 Throwing now, Lawrence. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. That is Nick Bosa from out on the edge who worked his way in for the sack. But have certainly hit the point of no return in this one because that was absolutely the last time they could afford a sack. You got to sustain your blocks and keep your quarterback clean for as long as it takes in this situation. They failed up front this time to do so. Lawrence able to hook up here with Ridley. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, balls delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Well, the faithful in full roar here in Santa Clara. This is third down. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Will the defense pressure or sit back? Here's fourth and five. And they'll try and throw for it with Lawrence. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Niners take over in terrific field position. So now let's reset here, Charles. They do have two timeouts left, so they can stop the clock twice. This one's not quite over yet. No, and what you're doing on defense, you're going to use both timeouts, obviously. But you've got to call defenses are going to force the issue early, meaning you want that play over fast. You don't want to give them time to dance around in the backfield or run a wide sweep that'll take off time. Blitz them, put pressure on them, make sure that play ends quickly so that you can go ahead and keep moving. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll start with the option. And a solid run down inside the 30. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with 65 seconds remaining. So they come up on second down. If they can get another run like we just saw, would likely put an end to this thing. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And he will have a Niners first down. And that ought to be the one that seals the victory. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. Down to a knee for the 49ers. This one about to be on ice. down to a knee and that should be the final act of the ball game listen anytime you take a knee to end a game that means you've won it so it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd isn't there <laughs> and the home crowd applauding they're happy with what they've seen chalk this one up in the left hand column for a win yeah that's right head to the locker room throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids your gloves your towels get to share it with the home team so the victory here for San Francisco, and you've got to say, CD, it was the defense who had a big part in the W. Well, without question, when you force four turnovers, you get to enjoy the spoils of victory, don't you? It's rare that you force four turnovers and lose a ball game. That's almost unheard of. They carried this one home, 
He talked about celebrating with each other and being in a position where going forward, all you think about is, let's get five next time. They're going to be on the hunt. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The 49ers get the win here at home as we say so long from Santa Clara.